for me, like aggregating content and saving it, it's almost like I put it in a street term. So when the prices are down, you buy He's a lot. He's not gonna understand the street term. Yeah. <laughs> when the prices are down, you buy a lot, a lot of work, and you put it on the street. But some of it you save for when the prices go up. Right. So a lot of the things I'm doing, people don't understand, and I know that. You know, I take pride in people not understanding because I'm in the future. But I know that it's going to be worth a lot, you know, in the, in, in the future. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, I'm the one that was taping all the time, way before everybody else was saying I was extra. And I'm like, nah, I know I'm going to make history. This is work. I'm working. And I'm not working not to make history. I'm only coming outside to make history. And I'm always 100% confident that I am. Right. And everything that I've done my whole life has been historic, you know? And I'm having fun with that. There's no reason to live unless you're going to make history to me. Not for everybody else, okay. but for okay. me. And I don't judge people for not wanting what I want. I, you know, what would make me different if everybody wanted what I want? You know, I was talking to Daniel today because I, I went to a jail, because uh, I've been visiting schools. Right. I'm part of something called the OSG. 250 black principals, but what I say, so they don't, you know, try to, is, is economically challenged, so they don't put us in a box, because they know the language we're going to speak. Right. So, you know, every Thursday, all these principals meet up, black principals, and talk about the things that they could do that the Board of Education is not doing, and how to sharpen your sword, what we really need. And what people have to understand is, the way they build jails is everyone that doesn't graduate, they build a jail, period. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. It's so, Bob, so, so one of the based principles. On statistics. This is the facts. It's not a statistic. That's no. how they do it. You right. feel me? So, I'm at the, the we did the uh, OSG conference, and, and on Tuesdays, I teach the principals a class about entrepreneurship right. so they could teach the kids. I'd rather the principals be the plug than a drug dealer or a rapper because mm -hmm. sometimes, most of the times, it's not sustainable. Right. You know? So, I, go, I, I meet this principal. I don't want to say his name, I don't want to blow him up, but he's like, yo, I'm in Chicago at a, a, a jail a kid's jail with a school in it. All right, I'm gonna come through. I come through. First of all, it's in a warehouse. No windows. Yeah. No outdoor space. Yeah. White women giving, uh, giving uh, therapy to black kids with bodies. Um, so they're telling me that, you know, they're a master at de-escalation, but all that matters is what's their reading scores. The average reading score was at a fourth grade reading level. So I'm like, you let them kids out with a fourth grade reading level, you know they coming back. Right. Now when I'm walking around and I'm, I'm talking to the kids, I'm like, these kids are extremely cool. Like, why are they so cool? And I was like, it's like a dope fiend cool. And I realized they was all doped up. Mm -hmm. So they're telling me that they let the kids out quicker mm -hmm. if they take the drugs. Mm -hmm. No windows, mm -hmm. recycled air. So that means the recidivative rate is high. That means when you go out and come right back, yeah. Now, this is what gets disgusting about it. Mm -hmm. Most jails are public sector, right? So you get paid by the bed. Right. You know how much they get paid per prisoner? A million fucking dollars. Every kid goes to jail and gets a million dollars. He's a millionaire if he goes to jail. But he ain't getting none of that money. But the drugs, I'm sure they marking that shit up. So what I'm looking at is an insane asylum. But when, when you say a million dollars, a million dollars the, the per child for there. the child is a million dollars per child to keep them per bed. Yeah. Between the drugs, the food, the clothes. I, we don't know it's what housing. they're spending it on. They, that's just that's just the line item. A million for that kid. Mm, He's a millionaire, right? And what they want is now, if you own a hotel, you want people to come back, right? Mm -hmm. So this is independent sector, meaning an independent, not the government doesn't own these jails. They outsource it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if they own a hotel and they're getting paid by the bed, they want you to come back. You know what's a sure way to make you come back? Make you a dope fiend and send you out into the street with a fourth grade education and have us fight each other. And regardless if you are rehabilitated or not, you put a nigga back in the war, he got to go get his stick. You No matter what, you're not letting nobody do nothing to you. Your ops ain't get rehabilitated. So it's a guaranteed cycle. And I'm like, damn, this is what they doing too? I'm watching this shit and I see the play. Mm -hmm. So now I'm tight. And we got to change that and bring awareness to it. And know that we are customers for them. Every time we go to jail, we're a cuzzy. We, we, we're the crackhead. Right. And we don't even know it. All right. Let's get this started. Real talk. I hear where you're going. All right, let's, let's talk about it. And that's the type of time I'm on. All right. We back. My expert opinion 
the greatest show in the world, 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 world. world, world, world. Wait, wait, y'all wasn't world, taping on that other stuff? Like we that. No, we got all of it. We got oh, okay. all of it. <laughs> it's okay, world, Dan. World, we got all of it. We got it. I don't want to waste jewels. We got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you some. Hater, 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 Lost a legend, certified yes. legend, Rest activist, athlete, hero, black superhero, Thanks. action star, and one of the first ones to do it that way. True right. legend. Rest in peace, Jim Brown. That was a moment of silence. Rest in peace. Yeah, Jim was like the, the one man, uh, what do they call it? You're, you're addicted to somebody, addicted to something, and everybody get together and they kind of. Man, you had an addicted personality. No, when you're addicted to something and then you come in and it's like all the people you love and they're like, "Yo, we gotta tell you about yourself right now." Oh, oh intervention. Uh, one, man did those one man yeah. intervention. One man intervention. Shout out to Jim Brown. Bigger. Welcome back. What's going on, everybody. Up, Much bigger. love. God is love. It's keeping it moving. Harlem is in the building today. Everybody see. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing something. Let me see how this go. Yo, shout out to everybody in, in, in the back there. Lucille, how you doing, sir? You, know. you know what I mean? Shout out, shout, shout out to the OGs. Yo, the OGs came up in here like, yo, y'all be on boys, you gotta give us seats. <laughs> what the fuck is y'all niggas doing? Hey, gym, you know what I mean? Right? Niggas flexing the gym. What the fuck is y'all niggas doing? <laughs> yo, listen. Listen, it's all up. Don't do that. It's all up. Yo, some of these young boys, some of these, some of these young boys is you, Daniel, you did 30 years ago. <laughs> that shit was definitely like so. Show, show love. You already, you already. But it's love. It's love across the scale, man. This is probably one of the only shows that's almost level from 24 to 55. Love. And, and, and understand, the only reason why they came through was because these are really my childhood friends. And if I step foot in Harlem and don't say what's up, it would be disrespectful. They, these are my brothers. They, they're going to need five minutes from me later. Mm -hmm. a, a conversation for yeah, sure. Yeah, a conversation for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Gap, what up? What's goody, Hoffa? Happy belated. Happy belated. Yeah. Don't clap, Mecca, because you had the opportunity to say all that shit. Yeah. You ain't say nothing, nigga. Bigger you two. Left it to him. Left it to him. I had to do my, my Jim bad. Brown thing. Left it to him. Bad, he bad, got bad. it, Jesus Christ. Shout out to Jim. You know what I mean? My man Jim. Right. This is his magazine right here. IG, Indie, Ooh. Gatekeepers. You know what I mean? Support that brother. Support him. Oh. Yo, champ. <laughs> if y'all knew, knew what was going on right here. Yeah, now. man. I'm going to say what's on my mind, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say what's on my mind. So, first of all, I'm happy to be here, happy to be free, happy yes. to be around legends, OGs, yes. G's, young G's, all of that, man. Yeah. And I'm not sitting in prison. Right. 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 And shout out to everybody who's locked down that's that's doing the right thing, trying to come home and, and get themselves right. right. So this is the number one brand in prison entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> my K T V magazine. Why you have my cover? Why you have my cover? Yo, you're I saw it coming. Dave, I saw home. it coming. Yo, Dave, 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 what's up, Dave, Dave did an issue with us that sold out. This sound like a battle. Well, I walk it's into a battle. A battle. It's a battle. See, I, Round one. It's so. Yo, did I create a battle? See Dane right there. You see Dame right there? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. Valid. Yeah. You know, and Look, you know, Y'all want to compete, man. You got to get me on the cover, you heard? Yo, shout out, shout out to uh, IGK. IGK. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? We all nah, like look, 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 man, there's, there's, enough, look, there's enough money for everybody, man. Absolutely, it's a huge market. It's a huge market, man. But we are number got, one. We are number one. We got a legend in the building tonight. I've been a fan of this guy for a very long time. Shout out to Clark Kent. He used to bring me up to the office. Mm. I used to get, see you work firsthand. Mm. And then my baby mom started working for you. Mm. I hated you for a little while. Everybody but, did. 
But it was cool because I because I understood the grind later on. Like, yo, the clock don't stop when you are an entrepreneur. And, we and you're got having the guy fun. That, and you're having fun. We got the guy that just loves to drop jewels everywhere. He's in the building with us tonight. And I think y'all need to pay attention to every single word that he said. Right. Dane Jackson. <laughs> But not only that, are you? Is it true that you're really the creator of Pause? Yes, that's a hundred percent my crew, the best out. Mm, so Paul. you know, yes, we play that game all day, all day, so all day, every day, all day. <laughs> all day. So the thing about the thing about that game was it wasn't meant for nobody to know. So we never told anybody. But why y'all say Pause? You'd have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then once you figured it out, it was the funniest shit in the world. <laughs> and you know, sometimes people be like, God damn, I'm, 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 I'm. actually, I knew that Rockefeller was over when they stopped playing pause. Like they, you know, the other side was like, kind of like, we don't do that no more. We grown. And it was like, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. I remember that interview when Bleak was like, I'm still playing. <laughs> yeah. They, you know what I'm and then, and then, you know, and I was like, well, no more collar shirts, you know, and it was over. Right. Bing said he don't do that shit no more. Niggas think about Dick's all day when niggas... Who said that? Bing. 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 The no, see, Bing. I'm not even, That shit, because I saw Bink in Virginia. I don't know you saw my grandma. I was like, what's that shit you talking? You the only nigga that used to get back at me. That That's... I don't know what he's talking about. You checked it. Yes. <laughs> and I did it on the gram, and everyone... I, you know, and they wasn't there. It was in Virginia. It was recently. Right. And I seen it. He was like, would somebody hit you? And I saw it on the feed. You know, and I was like, why you, you know, but I'm not going to get into that. But if he did have that statistic, someone else would have spoke about it as well. Mm. Like, yo, Bink he the dame up. That would be legendary. So I was like, just, you know, refresh my memory. Uh, self, self proclaimed. Yeah. But, you know, Bink is cool. Shout out to Bink. Yeah, you know? shout out to Bink. Cool. Yeah, for sure. You know, everybody has their ways. You can't judge them for ways. Right. You know, they got to judge themselves for that and get over that. And, you, don't, you know, you, you, you know, so, you, you know, Bink is my man. Well, thank you for creating the pause game because we play that shit all day. So right. Right. I, don't know if, I don't know if that's a thankable thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, yes, it's it is. ridiculous. It yes, is. It is. You got to be mindful of what you say. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps well, you sharp. It, not, See, not, what, not, we, what we do is we, we do things like brain games. You know what I mean? Like shit that just keeps you on point. Point. Because, you know, back in the jungle, you just really had to really know and be aware. Yeah. And again, not to give him the alley-oop, but I was talking to Lou the other day because we writing on... Um, Honor up part two and pay the full part two. Right. And I'm like, what was the root of how, you know, where you where you were, you know, how you were surviving so well in the street the way right. you were? Right. And he was like, like I, he was like, <laughs> um, Cagney movies, James Cagney movies. <laughs> I, I, I thought that if there was a white superhero, there should be a black one. And I'm like, that's all this time you've been channeling James Cagney? <laughs> right? I said, but what made you think you could do that? And he was like, you know, I had, you know, his family was already like that. So it was he was taught things. So a lot of situations that had happened in the street to other people hadn't happened to him, which is why he's still here, because he had guidance. He had a roadmap on how to survive. Right. So even as a young man, he had older knowledge. Right. You know what I mean? So you do anything the first time, you do it badly. You know, no matter what it is, whether it's building a house or a pack or whatever it is, the first time you do anything, you could never think it's gonna be the best time, it's gonna be the worst time. Not, not always. Most times. Not always. Algorithm wise. Yeah. I you know, not o nothing is always, bro. Yeah. You know, there's always a not always in everything. Right. But generally speaking, speaking. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. Like everything I've done for the first time, I fucked up a lot of bread, but I looked at it as a learning experience. Right. So you can't expect someone to go out and do something illegal without guidance, without getting caught. So there's some people I know that did done everything and never went to jail. And there's some people I know that in two minutes they got twenty years. You know, it's not for everybody, right. but you can't do anything without a roadmap or you do anything better with guidance. Right. What you kept know? you out of jail? Um, I, I didn't start out in the place where I had to hustle, you know, and I was clear. Like, I've always had an opinion. So, again, when people were doing things that I thought could stop me from having girls and things like that, I'd be like, yo, y'all bugging, mm. you know, for real. And we would laugh and we would joke, but we were always very honest. And... Honestly, what stopped me from going to jail was my OG. So like Daniel and Lou, there would be situations where it would get serious. And I'd be like, I'm ready to throw on my black Nike hairs. And they'd be like, you stay back. And I would be like, these niggas must think I'm soft. 
Mm. Yeah. Seriously, I thought yeah. this. I thought this. That's till, the feeling. Yeah. So I didn't see Danny for 25 years. It's in, the, the scene's in honor up. So we had this conversation. It was so deep that I said, "Just run the cameras. Let's just talk about this again." And I was like, "Why? You know, why you ain't let me do whatever with, when y'all was doing whatever?" He was like, "Yo, you wasn't meant for that. I knew you had a future." So the real OGs will never hurt nobody. That's gonna help everybody, and they can recognize that early. Right. You know. So again, I was a young guy, but I knew guys like these guys, and I didn't look at them as the scary. They were my friends. You know what I mean? And, and the reason why they're my friends is because they, they gave me guidance. They taught me how to hustle. They taught me how to survive. Right. You know? So what really stopped me from going to jail was the pain in full. You know, once that thing happened with Rich, I was like, if that shit could happen to Rich, it could happen to anybody. anybody. You know? And, and the crazy thing about it is, why was I there? Why was, they thought my man did that. You know what I'm saying? We was all there. Why was I, I, like, I'm like Forrest Gump of everything. Like, why was I there for the legendary hood shit as well as the legendary music shit? And everything else legendary. Because I'm meant to be legendary, you know? And that's how a Harlem nigga looks at things. Right. I'm not even surprised, you know? But, but, there's, but there's something different, Damn, You was doing something. I went to private school. No, 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 no. It ain't the private school. It's something that you did differently. Uh, James Cagney. You may have channeling, channeling James Cagney. Who were you channeling? Um, at that time, it was different moments, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can say this, like, all right, and again, I hate to keep swinging it, but he's a big part of the DNA. Right. D'Angelo's not my only OG, the oldest OG. He's just my favorite OG. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of, like, if you, you see how he is, mm -hmm. I'm like that, but not like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like he's a little bit more, but he's out, you know, I'm not him, but right. I'm, a, I'm, you can see where I get a lot of that from. Like, you know, he was always a dude to me that was doing something different than everyone else was doing. He was low, he was super fly, he was a funny guy, but he was a man tough. So I was kind of channeling Daniel, you know, is that, and, and what I liked about what he did was he was doing something different. Like when, when Lou was kind of getting, you know, a little bit over, you know, it was like getting crazy for a minute. Yeah. You know, me and Daniel was like, Daniel was like, yo, because he's like, oh, fuck that. I'm getting low. And I didn't see him for 25 years. He's evaporated. But he never left the block. I don't know how he did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I was like, I'm out. I'm, 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 I'm off that tip, too. Right. So I started looking for new ways. So when the thing happened with Payton Full, I was like, if he could get touched, it don't make sense to do this shit. And to really see that shit, like just when I, when I was talking about the jail, you hear about that shit. But like El Boogie, she was crying the whole time because she got a kid. I got a kid. To see a child, his heart broken and him crying, that shit is traumatizing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's traumatizing. So it, it, to, to see all that shit, I, 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 I wanted to do something different. To pay the full shot, I was like, man, this shit is crazy. It's disgusting. Mm. When you see little kids get killed and kidnapped and fingers getting cut off, nobody want to see that shit. That's not normal. Nah, this is something you saw. <laughs> Like first hand, first hand, first hand. So, so that that so so that shit right there. I'm like, yo, because I I went to private school. Right. You know, I I, I was I was a privileged dude. You know, what I mean, I never was struggling in my life. I, my my family always made sure I was all right. And then I, I the thing is, I can't even talk about my family because then you really understand. You know. Mm. But I just was like, yo, this shit ain't. It's, it don't feel good. And I'm intelligent. And my mom's died, and I'm like, yo, my mom's ain't do all of this shit for me to go to jail. And it ain't no girls in jail. I'm girl crazy. You know what I'm saying? That was really, it was like. <laughs> so I, I, put, I put myself in boarding school. You know what I mean? I went, I was, I'm out. I went to boarding school. And I was, the thing about it is like, when you go to private school your whole life, you never really know if you're better than everyone because they're white. Like I always thought I was better than everybody because I'm black and everyone else is just weaker than me because they white. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know if I could survive uptown. I just used to hear about it, you mm -hmm. know? I lived in 1199 and that was kind of like, a, a, at that time it was like a little oasis within itself. Everyone in there was spoiled. Right. So me being able to survive uptown, I had to prove that to myself. My instincts and the freedom and just the swag and the style, it burnt me out. You know, that we were making our own rules mm. and we lived by a code. You know what I mean? It was like the code was so real back then. And I was impressed by that. Mm. 
you know, like I always say, like the shit that really fucked me up with Daniel, that really was like the most positive thing that ever happened, is being in the car and seeing Daniel walking across the street, mad tough with the bucket, but he had his kids with him and they all had four wheelers and shit. And I was like, that shit looks fly. That looks, I, that's the flyest shit I saw in the hood, is a nigga walking around tough while his kids got toys. Yeah. You know, you yeah. providing and proud. And that's what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? And then like with Lou, and again, this is my observation. Lou, Lou just never thought anybody was tougher than him, but he was still <laughs> funny. <laughs> just never thought no. So I never thought nobody was tougher than me because you know I. Right. You know, me and him used to slap box when niggas were like, <gasps> you know, he'd pull up, niggas would cross the street, and I'd be able to. Niggas, would, literally, dudes would come to visit me, and they, he, this nigga would rob. Them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would be like, I'd be like, you remember that shit, man? When you robbed Tutu, Tutu came to see me with another nigga chain on a dirt bike, and I'm like, yo, get off the block, bro. He's like, nah, this is what's his name, chain. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? With the dirt bike, I see these niggas coming, him and I don't even want to say it. And they could have, they caught him for his chain. I'm like, why you gotta do that, man? Allegedly. Could, no, it wasn't allegedly. Was he already did the time. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> He's home. The nigga did 30 years. You know what I mean? Tried. He's home. I, tried. I saw it. I was trying. So I tried. they know allegedly. I tried. It I tried. Allegedly. Went down. I'm quiet. I, I had the kind of block that I would, you know, the same thing with Dirk was like, yo, I can't, I would be like, I can't control nothing on that block. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I could survive on that block. So there's nothing for me to be scared of moving forward. Mm -hmm. I seen everything you could see, and I didn't have to be tough. Like I wasn't the toughest guy, but they knew I could fight. Mm -hmm. My knuckle game was proper, mm -hmm. but I wasn't the gun guy. But mm -hmm. I wasn't scared. You know what I mean? But I was like, I could, nothing scares me after being on that block. You know what I mean? What's the worst thing you ever saw? Your fingers getting cut off sound. I close. didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. Sound close. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Right, man. Oh shit. Because I can tell. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you get yeah. desensitized, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I, I I you know, I've seen people be alive and then not alive, like breathe it out and then be like losing their breath. I seen a bullet in the head and the shit swell up with no blood. Like we seen all of that shit. I've been to too many wakes. You know, that's why I don't listen to hip hop. I listen to rock and roll because I don't want to hear about that shit. I, I, I do understand that the rest of the world does not live like that. Right. And so my shit, I deserve that. And my kids deserve that. I don't have. And then in hindsight, getting old, I'm like, yo, this is a program. Why, why how come all the dudes I know that really do something, they never did nothing to nobody white? Why we keep hurting our brothers? Because it's a program mm -hmm. to get us in jail right. for that million dollars a year that somebody's skimming off of. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, when I was at that kid's jail, I was like, oh, shit, the whole shit is for us to actually be a million dollars ahead in the jail. Mm. It was, yo, get, do that with the niggas. They, it, it wasn't no white people in that jail, except the therapists and the people running shit. Mm. That's crazy. It's, it's brilliant. But yeah, you, you, you know, know why certain areas is school You can't, right. get, mad, you can't get mad at your enemy for being better at you at controlling you. You gotta yeah. get mad at yourself for us letting that shit happen and be only worried about ourselves. So I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I'm not worried about me. I'm good. I'm more worried about we, my crew, my the people I love, my culture. You know, to see the fact that I could be with Lou and Daniel 30 years later after everything we went through, I'm celebrating every day. According to the algorithm, none of us supposed, to, supposed be to be here. here. Right. But now we here in front of cameras. We you making mean, movies. Uh, I had Dan I had Daniel on a Porsche right. with Stacy Dash. That was just the flex. That's real. And I hadn't seen him in 25 years. And because what happened was, um, you know, Smoke Dizzer, right? Yeah. So Shout he was my man. Smoke. Right. So he from the from the DD172 days. Right. Mm -hmm. But after like after a certain, I didn't want to hear nothing about no hood shit or nothing. I wanted to be an artist and just get on my artistic cool shit. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, "Yo, uh, Mook was like, I mean, um, Smoke Dizzle was like, yo, I, I want to introduce my man Murder Mook.' And I'm like, I don't really want to know nobody with the nickname Murder right now." <laughs> Not right now. Right. You know, just give me a minute. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but he called me with ASAP Rocky, and we had to do this like Harlem thing. You know, he was just blowing up. 
So we met we met at the fish the fish yeah. the spot was on 125th the fish the fish El, El, fish El Puerto El Puerto yeah so we El met Porto. all met there Cam came out but him and ASAP didn't really speak too much it was like a funny thing yeah. but I met Mook and we went to ASAP house and Mook was showing me his uh, battle rap television show he had at the time but when I was kicking it with him I was like this nigga really is like for me I I really liked him and shit so I'm like where you from he's like I'm from 127 I'm like. You know my man Daniel and, or Lou, they like, nah, I don't know him, I don't know him. And he had blackface with him and shit, and you know, blackface is loud. Right. And he kept coming around, and I was like, you sure? And then blackface pulled him aside and said, oh, I think he's talking about Nico. His name is D. I think that might be Daniel. So they showed me a picture. I'm like, yeah, that's him. Like, I have been looking for him for 25 years. Right. And truth be told, what, what had happened was, um, me and my other man, again, I go say his name, but we all, you know, we all know him. We, me and my man, that was like my partner, was beefing and shit. He had the block and he was selling one thing, and I was like, I want to sell the other. So I went to Daniel and was like, yo, you know what I mean? Like, and so he, and I ended up fucking that shit up. Like, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then Daniel disappeared and I never paid him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I owed him for a pack. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You want to get that back? get that back? Not yet. So, I ain't never asked. Nah, he, I ain't never asked. He, he never, never asked, asked never. Well, first of all, he wasn't. Well, he did, I was like, that was good enough, though. You know? right. Plus, he right. couldn't right. expect right. me to know how to work yeah. with what I was working with without guidance. He, right. We'll talk about it off camera. But when he came back, so I'm thinking like, Damn, I wonder if he's still the same Daniel. Right. So he pulls up with the convertible and he's strong and shit. He's the same Daniel, loud and all that. Right. So I was real happy because a lot of the guys that I know, you know, they washed. Yeah. And they're not the same. And they don't have that same, you know, because Harlem was just like, no matter what, at some point you're going to be up. Everybody has their run. You pose to have hard times. Right. A Harlem nigga is never this, ever ashamed to say I'm fucked up. Do you guys feel like superheroes? I am a superhero. Is? I don't feel like no, no, no. I, I told you. Let me finish. I'm Batman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a Batmobile. <laughs> I got a Bat cave. <laughs> and when niggas start talking about my money, I'd be like, stay out that man pockets. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah. either way, yeah, we are stupid. <laughs> the funny thing is, yeah, yes. That's, that's, that's the, the thing. That's yes. the thing. I must be uh, the Hulk. Yeah, you are the Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but seriously, like, um, when you got so much history and the environment, you you been there, you did it all, you hit the highest heights, and you know what I mean. You could still come to the neighborhood. Like, what's that? What, what what does that mean to, to the other people that see you? They just like, yo, that's yeah, Dame Beyond, uh, uh, uh yeah, yo, uh, uh. like it's 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 an inspiration that we usually don't get to see. Talk to him, man. You know what I mean? Tell him what like, we was just at, talk man. Talk to him, man. Like we, we was just on the hundred. What was that? What's the name? What's the hundred thirty second at, at? Where is that? Lorraine's. At Lorraine's. We were just in Lorraine's drinking. Drink, this is this is Lorraine's cup right here. Yeah. All of is too much fun not to be able to come back. If you didn't have fun in Harlem, you can't come back. But tell them how you able to come back. I mean, my brothers, you know, to me, if I make it, we all make it. Mm. If Lou makes it, I'm good. If Daniel makes it, I'm good. Hey, if I'm, you, know we, how, we, you know my man had the death penalty, right? You know yeah. when Dane was on top doing his Rockefeller. I'm game. still on top. Boy. I'm talking about when he was on top of the Rockefeller. Oh, game. yeah, yeah. Right. Only had the death penalty they were trying to find him. Right. They ain't put that bread up. Him and a couple other homie, official niggas, put that bread up. Got him off the death penalty, homie. Mm -hmm. But we did it. See that? Yeah. Yeah. I see that. I mean, niggas, you know, do that for they men. I did, I, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it anonymously. This our man, bro. This our bro. Right. Funny, good nigga, fishy. Right. Nigga, superficial, but we good dudes. Like mm -hmm. niggas, you grew up with and you love them. That's why Dame was like that. We knew we ain't have to. We could put the gun in his hand. He would have went. We ain't put the gun in. We had a bunch of other niggas for that. Right. And look what happened to him, homie. That nigga took off, homie. Like, come on, B. That stays there. Stay there, feds. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, 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 Yo, they, they I was, got to put this out there. Yeah, it was, yo, they, yo, they were saying the statue of Liberty. It was the that, boys' the limitations. Yeah, it, 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 but at the same time, the I did factor. this, and that's what he, that's I want to let, let it be known. I'm, that, a, yo, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That was a pause. Pause. <laughs> he said, oh, just pause. I'm not even gonna repeat that. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that. So I went. I was going to um, Manhattan Center, and I'm coming back from. Um, I'm coming back from. Hold on, Dan. Oh, yeah. I'm coming back from private school. <laughs> you know, I'm, I got kicked out of Dwight. And by the way, today, because my wife wrote a book that teaches kids how to dream, and I'm only in New York because I'm on a school tour. I'm t teaching these kids how to dream. They, they let me in the schools because I'm part of the OSG. Right. So, um, I like to get involved with that too. So I let's you talk will. About it. I'll have you tomorrow. We got a lot of things to talk right. about on how to help. Right. And uh, so uh, today, we were going. We went all. I went to all the Harlem school, all the schools. I've been to every borough, right. but I had to go back to my school, the private school I got kicked out of, mm -hmm. because they kicked me out of that school. And uh, because they kicked me out of that school, I, I went. I had a scholarship. I put my son back in there, paid full tuition and extra. They asked me to build a library. Mm. 15, that was Boogie. 15 years later, I'm coming back, and now they're a customer of mine. They're buying my books, and I'm educating those kids. Mm. Not underprivileged kids, third generation kids. Right. That's the mm. ultimate fuck you. That's the ultimate revenge. Mm. They counted me out, they kicked me out, and I'm now teaching your kids. Mm. You know what I mean? That's calm. So, anyway, mm. I'm in Manhattan Center. My man from her 42nd, whatever. And my mom's was like, yo, I, I, I was spoiled. And, and Suzuki's was only 10 grand. So I was like 15 and I'm like, yo mom, can you buy me a car? And she's like, I'm not buying you a Suzuki. You can't have a license. And me, I'm like, all right. So now I got it kicked out of Dwight. I'm in a black school and I'm seeing it crack. And I'm like, all right, I'll go to 142nd Street. And you know, these were the first guys that hit me with work. Right. So Lou used to come around and hit us with the work. What was the split? I think we might even get a dollar a bottle. <laughs> dollar a bottle. Yeah. Mm. If it was off a five dollar bottle, yeah, back then it might have been fives. It went to trades, it went to two for fives. But I think at that point we were at, at Nichols. Oh, yeah. And um, so Lou used to come around. And if you really want to know, to really get into it, because you know, Lou, the, the crew was called the Lynch Mob. Mm -hmm. But. You know, I was from that block, but I wasn't really a part of it because they was wild. And so Leon used to work. He had a UPS job and mm -hmm. they can tell you more about it. Mm -hmm. But he had a golf, you know, he was dressed just enough. But he was that kid that might have been in like school and played spades, but knew everybody. You know, right. he wasn't known to be tough. Right. So he quit one day. This is Leon. You're talking Leon, about. yeah. Uh, Charlie Clips pop. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he comes to me and he's like, yo, I got 1500. We could go half one, like an eighth or whatever. I'm like, hell no, you never hustle. Yeah, you know, I ain't doing that shit. But then he got cool with Lou, and then the next thing, everybody was down with him and shit, then it turned into the lynch mob. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like, but we always had a relationship from before the lynch mob, so we were always friends that could talk. You know, I never, I never saw that side of him like that. You know what I mean? Or even like, like I was lucky enough to be friends with the people that most people were like really scared of, but I think they just respected me because I was honest. Hmm. And you could ask them why. Because I asked them why. I'd be like, why the fuck did y'all even fuck with me like that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, to this day, I, I, I still be like, you know, because when you get older, you understand what that was. Yeah. But then, you know, I had a whole crew called The Best Out. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, well, The Best Out, there's no flavor one down, but that was like, but we were all a bunch of the younger guys and from different blocks. That had like, if I'm for a second, I'm you know I'm cool with the lynch mob, so you ain't gonna fuck with me, you know right. what I mean? 
and you know so on and so forth but we were more about like you know having fun and playing games but we all had t-shirts these dudes because <laughs> they want you know we would be snapping about girls and all that shit they had a t-shirt called the lynch mob what niggas getting hung on <laughs> <laughs> i was like yo how y'all niggas got uniforms for what y'all you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> But it was a fun time, you know, and, you know, we used to snap, play ball. It was just like, it, it was funny how much fun we had in such a, an environment, you know, but what, what, what got us through it was this kind of a code of honor. So the thing that regardless to what, and, I, you know, again, like I can't advocate nothing. I wasn't there. But what I know about Lou is he's always been honorable. Like he always played the game by the rules. He did his time. He ain't tell nobody. It wasn't never nobody outside of the game. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And all I knew of him is being just a loyal brother. You know what I mean? So like when he got in trouble, it was just like I was already so far removed from it. It was just like whatever happened, let's let me know. Right. And it took a while to get to me. And honestly, because of what Irv was going through, I was like, yo, don't, don't just keep it low. Like, it. I did it unanimous. Uh, 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 what do you call that? No, um, anonymously. Anonymously. Anonymous. You know what I mean? But after you did the time, we could talk about it. But right. I didn't want them to try to jam me up so I couldn't help him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So what happened with um, Homie. Yeah. yeah. What they did with um, Homie from Queens. Yeah, they brought eight So, there, so for me, going through all of that, right. this is why I've always been so happy. I'm free. I, I survived that shit. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, even the honorable guys got to do 30 years, bro. Right. But he still did that time. So and that's what, and you gotta think about something. We never lost connections with each other. You know what I mean? Even though I ain't seen him for 25 years, you know, him and I, either way, there's a lot of honorable people in my world. So I kind of still live by those old rules because I left the street when it was those old rules. Rules. Right. So you gotta remember I left before gang banging. It wasn't none of that when I was outside Shit, that I knew of. But e either way, like I don't judge the present, I just could talk about where I'm at. Right. You know what I mean? Because survival is different in, in, for every generation. It is. You know, like for me, like back when we was coming up, it was about getting money and only getting money. And the rough stuff only came when it was fucking with the money. And you didn't want, you, you it know. It's about it was, keeping secrets too. Keep your mouth closed. I mean, you got to stay out of jail. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. but having honor was everything. You know, and it looks, it looks really cool. Right. You know, like look what it looks like. Yeah, you know what I mean? You know, he, he never folded. Why you say it's mud now? Come on, huh? Charles, niggas is snitching, bro. It's normal. Ray Charles, you see how these niggas ratting? When we was out, they wasn't giving out deals like that. Mm. You had to pull yours. You go right. telling the police, they be like, nigga, you still going to jail. We don't give a fuck. Right. Now, ever since that Nicky Ball shit, the niggas start giving niggas deal. Right. But you, you gotta remember. But you remember, hold on, hold on. Shit started, started back then. But stop, though. No, but stop. But hold on, hold on. But also, right. who's in our circle? Jazz. Yeah. The only one Nicky Barnes didn't, and you know, God bless Jazz. But I like you feel to say me? one thing. What like, you mean, God bless Jazz? No, he's all right. Actually, I, I saw Jamal like, Joseph. I like to he told say me one he's all thing right. On, that, on, the, on the game thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, me being in the feds when they first start coming in, right. I had to hold them down because the West Coast was, was hurting them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they looked at me as the big homie of the big homie. But at the same time, had I caught it at that time, I wouldn't have let it fall into what it fell into on the West Coast. Right. Because the West Coast start breeding different gang, you know, different branches. Branches. Yeah. And they got out of, yo, you're not my big homie, this is my big homie. Right. So it's the same thing over here now. You know what I'm saying? And had they had kept it on that five, you know what I'm saying? Right. It would have been what it was. But I'm gonna say this one thing, and I'm 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 gonna end this gang shit, right? Is that um the best structure is the GDs, you know what I'm saying? Because they kept it the same. They they Larry Hoover, you know what I'm saying? That's the number one, and everybody pay homage to him. You know what I'm saying? Everything other than that just falls under that. The prince is on all, all that like that. That's how they should have so structure, structure. Around, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? But what, what was, I just wanna say this. Like 50 yeah. cents, uh -huh. I do not gangbang. 
I'm not gang gang. I'm not gang gang. gang, gang. gang. I don't disrespect I nothing do not that bang. No, for, I don't judge nobody for nothing. For, for, for me, it was weird when this shit started coming in the hood. Like I was walking yeah, around pulling up niggas' sleeves. Like, yo, what the fuck is y'all niggas doing? Like, that's we not, have to grab a home we not from you here. Know, you know what I'm saying? It ain't all about us riding big cars to get money no more. It ain't about money no more. So he watching the videos, and that's what they grab a hold of. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when they, when they introduce that, that's what they grab a hold of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me, myself, I grabbed a hold of what was there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody riding around in Rolls Royces, even though we ain't got it today. Or when, at that time, we you know we still were on business at that time, but at the same time, that's what it was. Money. money. Like you said, we ain't do things because of... You know what I'm saying? Beef with the next block for uh, stepping on the shoes. We did it for money. You know what right. yeah. Why you rob two two though? <laughs> <laughs> now it's real short. Okay, so so this is the mindset. This is the influence that you took into the music game. It, that was that was the courage I took into it. That was the pride. Right. That was that you can't play me. Right. You know, like y'all was funny. They, they were funny to me, so it was like I'm gonna tease you. I don't even have to. You know what I mean? But like, but also at that time, respect is a lot. Even though words and things might seem you know frivolous. Right. They're symbols of things. Right. So there's certain things that I had to like, I, I, it would never have been tolerated in the street. Certain kinds of betrayal and lying and, you know, right. you know, the thing about the street is it's a contract that's not written. It's just a code that's unspoken. You're just supposed to know better. Yeah. So, you know, like me, no matter what, I'm never going to dumb myself down. I like that level of honor. You know, I like the respect that comes with it. Now, you said in a recent interview, you and said... And it's not um, easy. It's not convenient. You said, um... Uh, doing business versus keeping my integrity. Sometimes I prefer to just keep my integrity. Not sometimes, I, all the time. All the time. Yeah, because when you're a hustler, you're used to going broke and then getting it back. Right. So for me, I'd be like, fuck this block. I could start another one. That's all. I just flip. Freedom is priceless to me. My integrity, my culture's integrity, and what I represent and the people I re represent. Making them proud is important to me. Not many things are, but just because these are the people that helped me. Like, again, like you said, I didn't have to pick up a gun. I was able to just be funny and I was able to, like, I was known that I, I could fight. Hmm. But that wasn't, but I wasn't running around like I'm gonna fight everybody. It was hmm. just like, you know, I was a handsome guy, you know what I mean? So it was like, a little, they thought I was soft, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, why, why you laughing? Why you laughing? Why you laughing? You know what I mean? You know, I was like, they, like, <laughs> like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, right. I was cute naming, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, from the east side, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Still a handsome guy. Right. Like, there's a different guy. So, my thing was like, Pop, that's that Harlem shit in us, that's all right. My, my thing was like, I know. He just, he just mad because he didn't say it. My, my thing was, he was like, yo, I would have said that shit too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my thing was to act ugly. Because the ugly niggas had all the girls in the hood. Right. The swag is what got the girls. If you was a pretty boy, you didn't get all the girls. You wasn't respected, you was a target. Right. So, it was like, yo, act ugly. You know, just be ready to, you know, it was always like, if it was every, anyone, they, it was me, they, they would look at to be like, let me get at him first. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to get, you know, I, when I was here, I'm smart. I went to the gym and learned how to box. I I, I was like, if I'm going to be in the street, because what happens is like, if you hustle with somebody, you hit him with a pack and you, he don't pay you, you got to hit him. Yeah. Now you paid, but if you don't hit him, everybody fucks Everybody's with you. Everybody's going to take your shit. And so it was just like logical to me to just sophisticate my knuckles. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I went to a real gym. I'm like, if I'm gonna be outside and shit, I gotta do that. Word. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just looked at it logically, like this is part of the game. Shout, so shout, I see niggas that can't fight. Koto. I see niggas that can't Punch fight. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna say I see niggas get nigga run over and hit them and they look all crazy and that shit don't look cool. Right. Niggas look tough, but when they swing, it's all wide and dumb nah, and they don't know how to fight. A, it's like a palm thing yeah. going on. <laughs> how about ask ask Lou about my knuckle game? <laughs> Yeah, no, I heard. That's Lou. I heard. But that's Lou. Oh, oh. <laughs> what you heard, huh? You, you heard? know, you know, Clark, Clark from my block. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He didn't told, he didn't told me like, Not yeah, they would snap Lou. on you, but niggas ain't with them hands. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they had the hands. Like, when they had the 
have all these guns like that. You had the fucking nigga. You know the I mean? the guns the guns was around, but it wasn't the first option. Now this is what it was. This Daniel, this is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it was. Yeah. A, a fair one, a fair yeah. one meant put the guns down on you saw. Right. So I'd be like, yo, let me get a fair one. Yeah. If you if you disrespected yeah. a fair one, you hit, you know pulling block, that, huh? no one fucked with you no more. That was right. whack. Like you you get kicked out the way. Them blocks like I was Forty Second Street, perfect example. Right. When niggas used to have a problem, like you and Dame had a problem, our moms, brothers, and all that, homies, y'all niggas go ahead and fight. Right. Niggas be scared, but your moms be in the window. Yeah, y'all better not get no guns. It was a family thing. You couldn't go right. shoot a nigga. Everybody in the window on a fire escape watching. Right. So niggas go shoot fire. Right. And but then you, they learn. But you also had programs that was placed like PL, PL, PAL, 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 And then when you went to the state joint, you had boxing and Elmira and stuff like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, because I came home from Elmira boxing. I used to bring the gloves to the, to the block. He'll tell you. And what, what happened? And what happened? <laughs> what happened? 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 Ah, yeah. Let him tell. <laughs> I'm gonna let Lou Sims tell. Him. How about that? <laughs> he ain't never put the gloves on with me, but Joe, look. One time, I, I, I got to put this out there. You know, his man Terrell, young dude. You know what I'm saying? That I, you know what I'm saying? That I, I used to mess with back then. You know what I'm saying? I ran up mm -hmm. with him a few times. I had to, you know, he had beat a few dudes up and they jumped him, and I had to come to. You know what I'm saying? Go back to the block. Yo, look, y'all gonna fight my man. Oh, which one you wanna fight? They they ain't wanna fight him. Mm -hmm. At the same time, one time when I, me and him put on the gloves, I had my coat on. And he caught me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 let me take this off. Right. You know when I took it off, I had to let him know, yo, look, this is what I know too. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the same why, time. Why you don't wanna talk about my hands? Yo, look, man, yo, look. You don't want to you know I gave my prop? Give me give yeah, my prop. Yeah, this is my issue. <laughs> Tell me about why he asked his question was what about James' hands? <laughs> That was the question. Yeah, hey, yo, hi. Hey, good. You about to catch the first two Harlem niggas shoot five on camera. Like, I'm not shooting five on camera. What the fuck is wrong with you? Go, 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 go. Y'all got to go to the side real quick. No, we not. Yo, stop that shit. Hey, yo, I'm not doing that. Yo, we actually got gloves. I'm not doing that. Don't do that. Take that part back to the block. Take that part back to the early 80s when the 52 was out, man. Yo, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know what I'm but 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 see those those is like like that it's like the golden years because it's yeah. like it's like yo you for it you take an L you learn yeah. from it you know yo, what I mean look, I just want to say one thing with you right because this is something I experienced right it's real shit a lot of dudes that like, that was coming in, like when we first went into the feds Brooklyn you know what I'm saying representing Harlem we all knew how to fight so we was represented with the raises and all that they wasn't used to that shit. You know what I'm saying? We coming in with the razors, we bust niggas down just to get out because we sit all the way out to California. We just want to get the fuck out of jail. Right. But at the same time, as the years went on, they start sending the young dudes in. These dudes on the video game, they ain't know how to fight or nothing. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm getting in my feelings like you from DC or I'm from New York. I'm like, yo, let them handle that. Thinking my little homie gonna go in there and get out on them. When my homie get out, I'm like, yo, nah, I got, I can't do that one. Because you're touching on me. Right. So the homies is like, yo, from D.C., and they like, yo, damn, dude, I thought you were going to, nah, man. Yo, I'm feeling some type of way because it's like a reflection. Right. You know what I'm saying? That we got in the jail. You right. know what I'm saying? But like I said, a lot of little homies, they was under no video game. They wasn't used was to the P.A.L. Yeah. and all the rest yeah. of that shit. Yeah. All just slapped back on the block. On the right. block. You right. know what I'm saying? Because so, no one was doing fair ones. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a whole different, the new generation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You know? But yeah. uh, but but again, I, what we don't ever want to be is because we remember. I remember when we were young, and we hear the old niggas talking about us, and it just survival is different. Like you said, it's video yeah, games, it's that and the third, and there's, there's Instagram. Right. You know, and, and what I wish was that yeah. that we could show the like like a guy like Lou. When when Lou first came home, the first thing we did was talk to the senator Eddie Milton, who's now the mayor, about prison reform. The fact that they, they don't feed you good food. There's nothing to rehabilitate you. They don't let you use a phone. You can't make no money while you're in jail. Right. You know? And then the next thing was therapy. So when you have a person like Lou who survived it all, now, and while he was in jail, this is all we talked about. How are we going to help when, 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 when you come home? How can people learn from your experience? And to be honest, when he first came, like before he came home, nobody knew which Lou was going to come home. We didn't know what he was going to be on because now he's a legend. 
Right. Now he's in rap records and shit, you know. But he been home. And he been he really, really been trying to help. He's staying out the way and trying to do what he could do so people don't have to go through what he went through. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he only survived it. He only went through it <laughs> so that people don't have to go through it. You can educate the next generation. Yeah. Mm. And that's the purpose. That's the reason why, you know, again, a lot of the cats come home with a name and they come right back to the box they went to jail on. Mm. You ain't heard about Lou doing nothing. You know, he just trying to help. You feel me? And that's the Lou I know. And that's the only Lou I'm fucking with. So it was definitely spoken about, like, yo, if you want that other shit, we can't fuck with you. He was like, I'm not even thinking about no shit like that. Who the fuck wants to come back here? Found religion, start painting, mm. start writing books. Well, how did you feel when, when you heard Alpo came back to the hood? I don't want to talk about him. At all? No. Not at all? Zero. Zero. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just echoing what you said. <laughs> Not at all. No reason to. Examples. Lou Sims. If I got Lou Sims in the room, why would I talk about somebody else? Gotcha. He my friend. You talking about somebody niggas don't know. I don't like talking about niggas that can't really actually speak up and say something for themselves. Right. So anything said about he can talk about, he right here. You know what I mean? But again, this this is the side of who I know. You know, chilling in the barbershop laughing. Right. He a funny cat. Jokes. He thinks he can get more girls than me and shit. <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> I think he's fresher than me. You know, we, we, we've always had a competitive thing. You see, he don't want to give me my props for, for my fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is our, it's the same. This is what it looked like when I was 15. Right. So this is who I'm around. You know, so how could I have any... It's just, it's, it's by default, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, I, I, you never heard me talk about him until he home. You know, there's a lot of things that I hold to the vest because I don't want to jeopardize, but I survive. I don't understand getting money and not, and only, I, the only reason why I'm back in Harlem is to go to the schools, bro. I'm not coming back to force on niggas that ain't got it. I don't want motherfuckers to feel bad and start doing shit to get them in jail to try to get what I got. I want to teach them how to have a great life, you know? Where I live right now, I'm hanging out with like, and I'm not, again, I ain't saying nobody name, but they billionaires. But they like fourth generation. So basically I'm hanging out with my son's kids right now. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I would be their father. Father. If you could make enough money that four generations of your kids don't have to ever do anything, but what they want to do, now that's gangster. But what are those kids like? Because they say they're fucking. These, that's what I'm saying. They say. You, they say. They say. No, no, no. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Because I'm telling you from personal experience. You, you know these where people, I'm about to go, right? The fourth generation ones, you would never know they got money. New money, you could tell new money because they want you to know they got money. Niggas that got money don't want you to know they got money. Right. Again, what I was accustomed to, the niggas that had the money, when you say, "Yo, what's up?" Well, I'm fucked up. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. I'm fucked up, man. You got money. Nobody shows money. That's just corny. You a target. Right. Who the fuck wants to be a target? Niggas want to relax. Who the fuck wants to stay on the same place you got to shoot niggas and worry about getting robbed? Who want to stay there? Police go to jail. Nigga, I want to sit on a lake in the ocean. I want to breathe. You ain't going to tell me how to live because I was born here. I live a lot of different lives, and I'm not going to know which life I want to live until I actually live it. So I'm going to go cop a ranch in Wyoming. I'm going to have a crib in Florida. I'm going to go have a crib in South Carolina. I'm going to go live in China. And then I'm gonna figure out where I wanna be and what I wanna be. You ain't gonna tell me what to be. Mm. I got legs, I can walk, I'm healthy, I I'm intelligent. I don't understand why people stay in the same environment that's held them down. That's just being lazy. Mm. We have consciousness right now. AI could think for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever you could visualize, you could do. Yo, I ran some clips through um clips of the show through through this AI program. It gave me statistics on what Everything. titles two to minutes. pick. In two minutes. What 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 clips I should make use for TikTok, what I should use and, for Instagram. And, and understand this, homie. Crazy. This is the caveman days of it. Mm. So this doesn't mean, oh, we're gonna lose job. It means, yo, let's create some new shit. Now things can happen faster. It ain't no excuses to get ahead right now. Right. Cause there's survivors here that can teach you how to get through it. Right. It's options. 
You know, it's easy to fucking hurt your brother. His hands is down. You know, every person that's ever hurt me has been someone that I knew very well, that I loved, because my hands was down. Because I ain't going to do nothing to you because I love your mother and your kids. That shit is cowardly to me. Mm. Nigga, if you're going to go to war, go to war with somebody that is really a fucking challenge. And there's too many challenges out here right now to be worried and distracted by bubblegum shit and for us to be hurting each other. Well, what's the challenges? Of what? What's the challenges that you see out here that, that we don't are stick ignoring? together? Yeah. That we think we gotta have a nine to five. Do you know that the education that we go through right now was established by Thomas Jefferson? That education and that curriculum was meant for black kids to learn how to work for white for, for black men to learn how to work for white men. And we still live by that curriculum. Yeah. So we have to write our own curriculum. curriculum. We yeah. have to have our own therapy. Correct. Every law that was passed a hundred years ago was by a man that had a slave. So by, by, because of that, every law should be changed. Change. It's a different day. Right. But if we don't know how to lobby or pass the law, which is not taught in school or anywhere else, how the fuck are we going to change things? In America, it's only legal if it's in law. So you know what we got to do? We got to get us elected. So that's why you see me and Gary in Indiana getting my man Eddie Milton, helping him get elected to mayor and being a part of something called the commission. We got to get with our back, black public officials, our black principals, it's the same thing, like, you don't mess with a girl unless, like, you chasing a girl, I saw this shit on TikTok, right. from a pimp. You know, the girls that you like are the ones that really don't like you. You fuck with the people that fuck with you. You fuck with the girl that loves you. You fuck with the people that are gonna embrace you. Right. If you look for the people that will so, embrace you, there's a lot there and we can do things. So Complaining about things, uh -huh. It's corny. Having what, a solution is all that matters. What happens when the people that fuck with you is another race? Say it again. What happens when the people that fuck with you is another race? It's not about a race. I'm just saying. What happens? I don't. I don't judge people for what their grandparents did. It's about where you at now. Right. It, it, it's about. It, it's never a color thing. That's that's meant to divide us. Right. That's why I say economically challenged because there's white people. It's about a social class. They want to keep us fighting each other so we keep having to work for one percent. Like, think about it, right? If, if we trying to save a block, why would we fight each other about anything if it was about the block? Why would we war about saving the block? What is a Democrat and a Republican? They trying to save America. How could you be for someone that's trying to save something you love? Right. So I'm fighting for something and you fighting for something. We fighting together. So as long as there's division, nothing can get done. It's a strategic thing for us to actually say you black and you white. That's the challenge. The division. They know exactly what we're going to say, when we're going to say it. We said it a hundred times. That's why we got to change the things we say. I agree with what you're saying. If, if, if I know you're going to punch me and I brace my face, it doesn't knock me out. But if I don't see that punch, you're going down. So we got to start hitting them with some shit they can't see. They already know what we're going to say, so they already know what to say back. What yeah. they haven't seen is us stick together. That's what they haven't seen. They've seen us talk no. about a curriculum but never present one. Oh. Who's us? What you mean us? When you say us, they've never seen us. Anybody together. economically challenged. Okay. Okay. So, 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 they, so now, now, now we're talking us. Uh, people who are not economically right. challenged. So 1% and 99. The 99. Okay. We're, I come from the 99, but I'm in the 1. But I still love the 99. I'm going to help the 99 get to the 1. I'm going to make the 1 the 99. It's the Marxism. Mm. But now, I, the reason I ask is because I... We always hear you talk about my culture, my culture, and I think people don't. You say my culture is like-minded people that have a good soul, that lead by love, not money. That's not hummusting all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the vision is whack. That's yeah. I that's agree with such that. a that's a deep statement coming from somebody who's been a champion, who's been perceived as a champion of having money. I didn't say you shouldn't have money. I know you didn't. I just said don't do anything for money. No. The challenge, let me tell you, the art is to figure out how to win without cheating. That's the art. It's easy to cheat. It's mm -hmm. easy to make money off of clickbait, us fucking each other up. Of course they're going to push that shit. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The challenge, like I'm in a world full of cheaters and the challenge is not to cheat. It's a test every day. You feel me? But I take pride in that shit because I'm winning. And that's and that's where your integrity comes in. 
Bro, all I got is my nuts and my work. <laughs> my cojones. And I won't give them All nothing. I got is my cojones and my work. I want you to, I would I love break them for nobody. show me an example of me breaking them. So I want to ask you a question. Because I feel like it's just, 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 uh, there's a certain percentage of people who see things differently. Who cares? Slavery a choice? Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> In this moment it is. In this moment. Because it's mental. Right. If you're working a nine to five, if you're subsiding to this education and the curriculum, if you're just complaining and not doing anything, if you're hurting your brother, that's slavery. When you go to jail, you work for slave wages, right? You got chains on, right? You in a cage, right? Mm -hmm. That's slavery. It's just legal. So I said this before, you know, when, when slavery became legal, they were like, I mean, illegal. Everybody with, with, with slaves, like, what are we going to do? We're going to fucking suppress them, make them fight each other, and then legally we'll be able to put them in chains. So instead of calling me slave master, you'll call me warden and CO. Right. Mm -hmm. We got to make them give us their freedom by making them hurt each other. That's what. And how are we going to do that? Create a system that is not beneficial to them. So the way we're taught triggers us. Who the fuck wants to hear that we're number two? Even down to religion, Jesus Christ is not the real, the name is Joshua. Jesus Christ is the European interpretation of the name. Anywhere I go on the planet, they call me Dane. There ain't no Russian version of Dane. You right. understand what I'm saying? Right. So if you born thinking that you number two, of course, you want to move like that. Joshua Ben Yehuda. Yeah. yeah. So why are we still calling Jesus and we know the truth? Because we're programmed to. Mm -hmm. Shoved in our face from the day we born. Yeah. To call, look, look, if you tell me you a fan of mine, but you calling me Damien, I'm going to be like, all right, cool, but it's going to bother me a little. I'm not going to give you full blessing. I'm not going to be really that cool with you. So if you're calling God by the wrong name, how do you think you're going to get a full blessing? He's a little tight at you, or she, you know? Right. So it starts there. Then it goes to the education, and then it goes to the food we eat, and then it goes to us hurting each other. How because much, we don't have an option. If it's not sports or entertainment, it's crime. How much, how much of, a, of a role do you think music plays in all this? It's the most important because it's the escape. See, if you hear something eight times, it programs you. So anything you hear repetitively, whether you like it or not, it's in your brain. Mm -hmm. So music is hypnotizing. I've hated songs and then I've liked them after I heard them 10 times. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hate songs time. and know every word because my daughter likes them and I got to hear it. You feel me? Right. You notice that if you tell somebody something, they don't listen to you. You got to tell them at least eight times. Or they got to hear it from somebody else. Or they got to be scared. Why scared? Why not? I don't know that. If I put a gun in your face, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do. Mm. Right? Uh, maybe sometimes not. No, nah. he's going to try to take the gun from you. <laughs> no, no, right. no, the answer is the answer. The average. I'm talking about the algorithm, not the individual. Yeah, Y'all yeah. right. yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, so right. there's always, because, mm, you know, you can always do that. Right. There's always somebody that's not, I'm a, mm, you know what I mean? I'm that guy that's not going to do what everybody's doing. But I'm generally going by what everybody's doing. Because that's my uh, consumer. That's I got a, I got a question for you about what you was talking about as far as the prison system is <laughs> concerned, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm what's considered a recidivist, right? Mm -hmm. I've been in and out, been in and out, of, in and out of prison for 24 years, right? You've been a client. Yeah, hmm. you've been exactly. Amazing. But let me tell you what changed me. One of the main things that changed my mindset was education, right? It was a private institution that gave us a, a $250,000 education, right? And it's only for a selected, selected few people, right? So my thing is that, my question to you is, with the advocacy that you're doing, what plays are being made to institute like college education into these prison systems across the country? Because I know that's, it worked for me, and I know the statistics as far as when a brother or sister get their associates, they get their bachelors, they get their masters, they do not come back to prison. This is my plan. Also, if they have a place to live. Right. That's very important. So reentry programs as well. No, no, no. This is my plan. I'm trying to build transitional rehab facilities because mm. it's really hard if you're not used to a phone to understand a phone when you come home. Right. And understanding you could do banking, you could do any. It's not a phone no more. Right. Honestly, the first thing I would teach somebody before they come home is how to use a phone. 
how to get a, how to understand Instagram, how to understand you know what I mean? Because you don't this is this shit is completely foreign to someone that's been away for a long time. You know what I mean? They think they need help, and it's really easy. And I need help. I'm 52. I have people that kind of help me with these things, but I know it needs to be done. So the first thing I do is it would be therapy. Inside. Definitely. Before you get out there. But I would give you a place to live as well. As long as you're learning and I'm giving you a job because I would want to make everybody a partner. It's the economic thing that really fucks. There's no real, you're not beefing when you got money. You know, and yeah. if you can get your friends some money and you can get everybody some money, everybody's happy. So we can teach everybody how to be rich and also say, yo, if you can't do it yourself, here's a pack. I'm going to show you how to hustle. It's a roadmap. Anybody get hustled if they're told. You got to be a dumbass not to listen to someone that's been surviving at it. We just don't give up the game. Traditionally, black millionaires hide. They think they're lucky to survive in a legal way or illegal way. Right. So we never have these visuals of what it even looks like to win. So even in my movie making, my next movie is coming out, um, you know, June 23rd. And it's about lineage. It's about a black family uh, in Detroit that bought a hospital. And they lost it all. And then recently they got it back. And, you know, Tommy Duncan, he sold his company for $120 million. But what does it look like three generations of black wealth? If we don't see it, we don't know what to fight for. Right. All we see is what it looks like when you hustle or when you catch a record. So that's all we know what to try to do. Why can't we make money in healthcare? Why can't we sell buttons? Every single thing in here, whoever made anything in this shop at a professional level, down to, the, down to the caps or the tips on this joint is a man here. But they don't teach us how to sell anything but our soul. Hmm. Hmm. We're going we're gonna to dive a little bit. Pause deeper into that after this five minute break. Of course, I don't Not, eat chicken. It's too Richard G. I don't want from one from one. I'm a vegetarian. Richard G. How long did it take to get they call him a Little day? Rich. Word? Look like you. Yeah, because I watched the documentary and once that I was all that's up. The documentary, once I know how much do, especially you can't chicken. See it. You can't know, see the doctor told me chicken is poison. Disgusting. Look like you. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I'll still be fucking that shit up. I'll be giving a fuck. Even if it's doodle one? Huh? 100 percent of chicken got doodle on it. We clean that shit before no, you we don't, cook it. You can't clean doodle. You can't wipe doodle off something. You can't. If doodle yeah, touches anything, you don't put it in your mouth. Up. You don't wipe it's it off and put it in your mouth. He's no. Mm -hmm. conversation. So you know, think about this. Brain. So you have a when you, you, you eat shrimp? Pause. For sure. So you bust that when you bust the back of a shrimp, that line, that black line that black is doodle. Yeah. So imagine if you did that to a cow or a chicken. So when they throw it in the blender, the doodle goes all over it. They just bust that shit open and doodle all over it. Trying to fuck up our appetite. I'm not trying I love to chicken. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Right. Nah, I hear you. You know what I mean? Like, you know what the worst thing in the world is? If my man come home from doing 30 years and being as wild as he is and he died from a cheeseburger, you know how many of my homies are dying from cheeseburgers? Meat is the number one cause of diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. And what they feed you in the jails. That's a, I mean, Process, it's, processed food. It's not, no. There's, there's no fruit offered, no commissary that has any healthy option at all. Yeah. Niggas come out strong, but no organs. You can't lift weights and be wheezing. That don't make sense to be strong but have weak organs. Your mm -hmm. organs is what count, not your muscles. Right. You know, we're not built to digest meat. Dogs are built, are our, built our to digest meat. Ain't meant, ain't meant None of that either. shit is. And also, if you believe in the Bible, it says God, God says, thou shall not kill. It don't just say thou shall not kill humans. Karmically, what if what if fucking God was a cow? Uh, there, there, there's a lot of I got dogs. There's a lot of rules. You're just hungry, you say chicken. I don't want to There's a lot there's, there's a lot of dietary rules. Nigga just burp a chicken burp. There's a lot of uh. <laughs> chicken, my nigga. I don't care. How you gonna trust your oppressor to feed you? How you gonna trust a man to enslave you to give you food? I'm not mad at what At you a mass say. level. How you gonna trust somebody with poor with shit you put in your mouth? How you gonna eat? To have a designer car, designer sneakers, and eat cheap food. That shit don't add up. Mm. Eat some designer food. Who the fuck want to be rich if you in a hospital wheezing? But everybody so can't afford that, though. That's not true. Nigga, vegetables them. get grown. If you know how to grow, you ain't got to pay a dollar. 
Everybody and that's what Farrakhan was trying to teach But everybody us. can't afford that. Don't dude. say that. Nah, well, first but, of all, well, hold tight. Stop. Yeah. We in Harlem. Can't don't even happen in Harlem. <laughs> don't ever say can't to me. But we talking you just, about hold the on, you just, we talk Stop for a second. System, though. Fuck a system. Hold on. You just told me you had an Ivy League education and you went to jail. Yeah, never and say you know can't. What? And you know what I love? You got a magazine. Right, Dane, Dane. Just don't say can't. Hold on, hold on. Just don't right, start it right with can't. That. You're right, you're right about don't that. Don't start it with, because you know what I'm saying? Are, hold on, hold on, real quick. There's certain communities that because there's food insecurities in those communities, and Actually, it's a public uh, health issue. No, 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 a food desert. That's a fact. Food desert. Food desert. desert. And there's food insecurities as well. Uh, it's uh, it's me, the same thing, Let Dane. me explain something to you. This is something that they teach you so you don't do it. Healthy food is not more generally is not more expensive than unhealthy food. Anything that's given to us is given to us to hurt us. Education, religion, and food. I don't trust them to give us anything. I'm not judging. This right. is not an assault on anyone's character. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I didn't mean you. to make you feel guilty. No. But what <laughs> I'm saying is, anyone, everybody burping from jerk chicken right now. Everybody that's mad right now saying something is like, burp, I just ate some jerk chicken. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm just a guy that don't trust people. So, especially the shit pause I put in my mouth. Right. But if I know this doo-doo all over chicken, and I know if they what? actually being uh, farmed and sitting around and doo-doo all day and there's pus all over them and rats run all over, I'm not eating that shit. How long you been a vegan? Hey, yo, excuse me, excuse me. Let me just pause that, right? Because vegetables, the fertilizers that they're using... It's horse shit. Right. It has to be organic. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Right. It's still the same thing. It's not the same thing. And it's then organic. you got hybrids. They have carbon. Okay, so steroids. you have to get. This is the thing. They don't teach us this. So yes, by let law, say, wait, wait. Say, by law, they do make you use by the seeds. You got to go get the right seeds, but so listen, you got to get organic. Study of this, because I went from '83 all the way to I came home of being vegetarian in jail. Listen, and everything that I ate was meat. For like meat, I didn't eat meat, but chicken. Long as it's digested for your system, you can flush it. Meat stay in your system for a long time. Right. So that that cause cancer and the rest of all that stuff. And right. and it's and it's GMO fed say, and, and it's doo doo. Whatever whatever you can digest quickly, you know what I'm saying. Plus the system, meaning that you gotta have at least two to three that you know releases a day. Right. If not. You just want to eat chicken, Lou. No. You can't. You can't. You're not talking about chicken, though. You're not talking about chicken. You're too long for that. I don't care. You're talking about the chicken. No, you just want to eat chicken. Yo, bro, you got doodle on it. I don't care about that, Jefferson. I'm not eating that with doodle on it. Let's argue later. What was the name of the documentary? All right, you got it. You got it. You got it. I'm still. All right, you got it. You got it. You got it. It's a double edged sword. You are right. It's a double edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Because if you right. eat too clean, I'm not judging. If you eat too clean and you find yourself in an environment where you're not able to get that stuff, you'll get sick right away. Why are we? Right. Right. Let me ask you a question. What the fuck are we talking about this for? The worst case scenario. Listen. Bottom line is, regardless of what you're saying, it's still gonna be due to one chicken. It's still gonna be the number one cause of cancer, right. the number one cause of heart disease disease and diabetes and it's right there at your local fucking bodega in the hood for a reason. Right. So right. you can take it what you want. Oh, Do what you right. want with it. Right. I don't, I'm not I'm not judging you. I, I, I'm not going to Again, I'll be sad, but I won't be mad. But you're completely vegetarian. Yes. For what? how long? Since I watched What the Health. What the Health. Oh, yeah. I watched it. I what seen the hell. that. That I next day I had a bunch of beef bacon. I threw all that shit out. I couldn't unsee doodle -doo and pus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here, here's the thing. Yo, this, listen, is what I, this is what I'm negating, Dame, right? Don't negate it's, it. No, I'm negating it, bro. Don't worry about it's it. This is what eat college education. Eat your bacon. If you want to eat bacon, I don't eat, eat bacon. bacon. Right. I just eat seafood. And, I and that's it. Oh, my God. That's really right. disgusting. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Did you see Seaspiracy? No, but you're talking about Seaspiracy. Dame? Yeah. It's on Netflix. Check no, it out. Hold on, Seaspiracy. Check that shit out. Listen, the thing is, Dame is talking about systems. Right. When you hear Dame refer to they, this is what they're doing. They doing that. Those are systems that are implemented and put in place for to make food deserts in our communities. Right. So that we have less healthier options. And right. you know why? Because nobody they just learned this. When did you just learn this to be vegan, bro? To be vegan? Yeah. When, when did you just learn this information about the doodle? -doo? 
Yeah, about, about all that shit about you watched. Six, seven, about, yeah. about no, no. <laughs> about no. When about, it wasn't healthy. About seven out. years. I, honestly, I always all thought right. meat was disgusting. Like I could never eat big chicken. Right, shit, but you learned 12, this within 12, the last 13, decade. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying. This was learned in the last decade. So right. there's a lack of education right. in these systems. No, I knew this on shit. purpose, though. On I purpose, knew this absolutely. When I, heard right. yeah, I agree with you. Song. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, but regardless, yeah, I mean, all this stuff. But either way, it's gonna get there. We are gonna be all right. Then. It's all right. But anyway, don't worry about it. I didn't mean to make anybody feel guilty. Listen, listen. They, I didn't I'm make anybody disciplined. feel guilty. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's all everybody good. eat what you want to eat. But <laughs> again, for me, I'm 52, right? And honestly, when I was like 20, I thought 52 meant cook. So I'm like, yo, I'm having mad fun. I'm still crispy. I'm still, I still feel 25. I just like living. So anything that I know, I make investments in my future, especially my body. So if I know something gonna make it where I ain't gonna be uncomfortable, like I seen people have to get their ass wiped that were fucking very strong when they were young. Right. I don't wanna get, I don't want nobody in my family wiping my ass. Period. So that's my choice. All right, I'm gonna say uh, Dave, do you ever hold, hold on one second? Let me let me let me do you ever think about the way you approach disseminating the information that you do? And maybe you catch more flies with honey instead of shit. I don't think about that type of shit. Like I can, we I, when can I all speak, tell that. let me just say this: when I speak, I'm just saying how I feel. Mm-hmm. I don't say I'm right. I'm just saying how I feel. Right. My my I sometimes change based on information I learn. Mm-hmm. I'm not stuck in any way. I'm not speaking on the facts of what you say. I don't even understand what you're asking. Okay, okay let's delivery. let's let's go back around. Just tell me your delivery is a little harsh. Let him talk. No, let me just say one thing. Let me speak as you would say how you feel. Let me see how I feel. But it's my interview. I'm 57. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you your interview. Oh, I'm you're going to give it to me? Let me give Pause. it to you. I'm 57. <laughs> right? I'm 57. He's going to let you finish. Right, right, right. I work out every day. This I'm pushing 315. 57. Oh, okay. That's a lot. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? But like I said, the way I eat is, is, is due to the my program of how I work out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, I'm not taking away what you taking away. I'm just taking away. When I was in the jail, they had a lot of unhealthy you know, options. Like they had a all lot of unhealthy stuff. options. I was unhealthy. Yo, when I came home. Just say you Jewish and get the kosher meals. Right. That's so a fact. Nah, nah. nah they, just, just still, they don't have that in the face. It's still flesh. Oh. Like That's said, only in the state. They got a lot of lot of stuff that got high in sodium and sweets. Right. So I came home with borderline diabetes and all the rest of that stuff. And he can tell you, I was on meds. I did away with it when I came home because I was able to eat right. Right. At the same time, like I said, I'm pushing 315. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing, at, on, a, on a startup, I'm doing at least 15 to 20 pull-ups on a startup. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? You know? And mm-hmm. I slimmed down a lot since we went out, right? You know you what I'm did, saying? You did. But at the same time, <laughs> I can't hold everything. I can't hold right. everything from McDonald's to all that got fat, bloated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I realized, when I went to the hospital and they told me what my health was, I was like, oh, I got to stop it. So now I'm down. You know what I'm saying? I'm trimmed down. Oh. At the same time, I understand what you're saying, but like when you're working like that, you need that protein. You know what I'm saying? And what what's what's good for it is whatever you can digest good. It's gonna clean your system up. Right. You know what I'm saying? I clean my system. As long as I'm shitting two, two, two three times a day, I'm good. Excuse my leg. Right. Yo, let me eat something. Excuse my leg. Right. Two, three long, times a day. I'm good. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. But that's, all y'all that's, that's going one time a day, y'all need to go get checked, man. Get a colonic. I'm telling y'all. But there's people that lived like to 90 years old, 100 years old. 90 that years ago, the food in. wasn't that yeah, bad. Yeah, that's a fact. No, it's a different day. Nah, nah, I don't want to. I'm not arguing with y'all about this shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to yeah, argue with you. Yeah, you eat what you want to eat. I ain't going to be mad. I'm just going to tell you what I know. But mm-hmm. your question about dissemination and all that was, whatever that was. Disseminating your information. Yeah, yeah. The way you disseminate your information. What does that mean? Your approach. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Second, get this. You're talking about your approach, Dave. Approach on my way. Well, like, like sometimes. Hold on, bro, bro. Let me, let me, yeah, let me, yeah, let me, yeah, let me understand yeah. the question so I can answer it correctly. Right. Um, we've all watched you for years. Mm, yeah. The way you've said what you said, the way you've approached mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. No one's ever doubted that you mean it, that you believe it, or it that you believe it to be the truth, even if they disagreed with you. Mm. Nobody ever thinks that you're lying. It's your approach and how you tell people how you feel, mm. what the truth is, what mm. the facts are. From your Rockefeller days, where you talk about kicking it with your childhood friends up until now. The thing that's unattractive about Dame Dash and his information has always been the delivery. 
Okay. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on. No, you know, I got it. Hold on, hold on, bro. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just. And this, and this, again, this is not an insult, of course. Not. I don't take it as great because I would never. I we we ain't got that kind of you know that kind of time. But that's always been the knock on Dame Dash that you play bad cop and you volunteer to play bad cop. Mm -hmm. And there are people whose ears will be. What's the question? Have you ever have you ever considered that? Is this something you're aware of? And have you ever thought to change it? So, I'm about effectiveness. And regardless of the way, the thing about people being taught, you can't tell someone that's teaching you something that you don't know how to tell you. And a lot of times, I've said things a lot of different ways very nicely, but no one's heard me. Remember I said that nine times thing? So by the time I talk a certain way, it's because I said it nine times already. Hmm. But at the end of the day, a lot of the times people's ignorance is kind of funny to me. And, and, and it's like, I can have fun with it. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Okay. And I'm not so worried about, especially men, their egos, because it's a false sense of security. So like I said, a guy like Lou, a guy like Daniel, we really honestly can say anything. We don't disrespect each other, but we do say what we feel. Mm -hmm. And in any delivery, but we're men enough to be like, we listen to the substance of the word. Mm -hmm. Right. We will never put our hands on each other, mm -hmm. no matter how we talk to each other, because we don't go that far. You know, it's no suck my dick, pause, mother, none of that type shit. Copy that. It's always, but we can always say how we feel. Mm -hmm. Regardless to tone, the test is if you can listen to the word. I'm just a test. It shouldn't matter how I say it if I'm gonna get you some money. As long as whole time, stop. As long as I'm not disrespecting you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna speak to the way you like to be spoke. The only way for you to grow, pause, is to be uncomfortable. The only way to change your circumstances to do it different. Most people are complacent in being mediocre. Mm -hmm. I can't accept it. And it's funny to me. So I'm not worried about sensitive dudes. I'm not worried about men with vaginas. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And the reason why I know that men exist without vaginas is because I'm around them. So is, is your, and correct me if I'm wrong, is your stance that people who take offense to your delivery are not worth being saved. As long as what I'm saying affects them. So regardless of how you feel, as long as you're productive. If I'm, this is what I tell, and this is what I know. With a child, if you give him love, hug him up, give him sweets, and don't teach him how to read, you're killing him. Because right. he's going to jail. So being nice is not what is going to be productive for you. It can hurt you. It's enabling. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not here to fucking talk to men like women. And if you're a real man, you can handle a respectful conversation regardless of whether you like the tone. But I never disrespect unless you disrespect. And if now, hold not, on. Now, if you disrespect, it's on. Right. And you're lucky that it's only that we talk. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't like is their reactions <clears throat> to the questions they ask me. Now, I'm a man of respect. Now, if you disrespect me, I can't put my hands on you because I could go to jail. But I'm going to verbally assault you. I'm going to make you very uncomfortable. And then I'm going to laugh at you. And if I like your girl, I might take her. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth. No, again. That's real talk. Again, this has nothing to do. <laughs> that's, this, that's Brooklyn shit. This that is Brooklyn, Brooklyn shit. would have been like, boom, rob the commit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the Brooklyn niggas that fuck with hard shit. That's a fact. I most definitely got a shout out to the old man. Can I say something Red Bug and uh, motherfucking Bogart. This nigga had Red Bug on the phone yeah. the other day. I was like, Red Bug from him? How you know everybody? That's my nigga. I remember Def Jam, like, you know Lou, and once he said that, I'd be like, oh, he's official. I got it. I'm going to show you. Man, 
Oh, one, one, one at a time, one at a time, right, right, one right, at a time. Right. time. I, don't, hard. I don't like the talk. I don't like the talk. I'm saying, right. but I'm going to say this real quick, right? I went to jail when I was 17 years old, and I watched this man with the best style crew doing their thing. Right. I was promoting parties when I was 15 years old, 16 years old. Right. My company is called Boss Baby Entertainment. Right. I watched this man every fucking day. Bullshit. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, and like strong niggas get strength yeah, from strength. Know, like, right. I, so I'm not talking I, to weak niggas. I'm talking to strong right, niggas. Exactly. I just want to say something. I just want to right. say something. Like I heard all the stories about the OGs, Lou, and like I've been around them, grew up under them. Right. You know what I mean? But as a young boy, as a young boy, yeah, like I watched them, and I followed their blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, I do parties. I, 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 book, I book artists all over the country. Right. Quietly. Quietly. Just did a, did a Shanti event. Main old Jim Jones event. Right. Chicago, Atlanta, all that. Quietly. You right. know what I'm saying? But I took a page out their book. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, when you, when you, when you listen to them, it means something. It really means something. Right. You ain't gotta talk about it, but it means something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is real shit. Real shit. So all I'm gonna say is this, man. They like that. Right. You know I mean? <laughs> right. The best out crew, the boss baby wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for them. They they ain't ever say something to you that made you upset, but I was they... in his house <laughs> in right. Cali. Right. Beverly right. Hills, say about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Garden Gated, Rolls Royce. Right. I got the, I got, I got, I, yeah, I got receipts. Right. Uh, say Beverly Hills. But did he ever say Beverly something to you <laughs> that got you upset? <laughs> no, but this is nah. real talk. I'm the young boy. I'm, I'm the young boy. These my OGs. It's not hard to believe that you would say something nah. to somebody that got them you, you up. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course so I said something. Anyone way that's way way trying to rob me, I made something. I said something. I've been trying to make two years. And he's my alumni. He was away for like 25 years. I graduated years. with college with this man. Oh, yeah, home. right. And we went to all college together. Amazing job right now. You know what I mean? We got Dope. bachelor's degrees together. Talk the, 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 about the, the, what you're doing right now. The, the, the yeah, strength. The, 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 the strength. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yes. Thank you, bro. Thank working. you. Yeah. The, and, and he, you know, again. Yeah. The, the thing that people want, like, you might ask a guy, like, and again, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not fucking with him, but like, you would wonder, like, why do people fuck with Donald Trump? He's obnoxious. Because there's just strength in being fearless. Mm, right. You know, and not caring about what people think. We're so worried about what people think that we don't really say what we think. So lying to me is cowardly. Mm -hmm. So you have to say things to people, whether they like it or not, if it's the truth. Because if you tell them what they want to hear, they're going to continue to fail. Tact? About what? Tact. Anything. The thing about it is... No, but the... I mean, Let, I, I don't no, understand no. the question. Like, the thing about it is but like... But you get what you're fighting against, right? I'm not fighting. No, 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 period. I'm I having mean, fun I mean, with, say, I mean, I'm toying period. with. The, your, your, the, the way that you address things, you get that society is being set up in a way where people are taking offense Of course it's meant to that do that. I'm saying. Yeah, these are programmed people. Yeah. So I'm trying to break people out the pro, and I have. So when I did the Breakfast Club with Daniel, everybody was mad, but everything changed. It became right. independence. So when I was being obnoxious and waking people up about independence, they were like, oh shit, you talking about Massa. And they thought that shit was cool. And now it's not cool. Mm. I changed the game. Mm. You have to be disruptive to change the game. Mm. You cannot change the game. You can't take a block being nice. So your approach is You know what I said? You can't take a block you being nice. You can't go to war being nice. The people that are hurting are the people that need to be hurt. <laughs> but none of my homeboys is hurting with me. Mm -hmm. You ain't hear no disrespect. We still cool. It's been 20. This man used to work at Rockwood with me t 20 years ago. <laughs> Anybody you know that knew me years ago, they don't use Kim Rosario. I knew her in college, Columbia College. Rosario. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we still cool. So if I'm not cool with you, that means you a sucker. I met you. Well, <laughs> if, you if I'm not cool with you, that means you a hurt. <laughs> the people that are offended need to be offended. My, my intention is to offend those that have, 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 have stopped the evolution of our culture. 
I want them uncomfortable. Our culture. Yes, our culture. Again, clarify our culture because you don't people just that have been hip-hop. oppressed. No, hip hop. Uh, definitely black people first and foremost because I'm okay. black. But anyone that's been economically challenged by the system, so that you're meant to work and fight your brother and be mad at other people for your lack of success, mm-hmm. but you're still paying homage to those that are oppressing you. Mm-hmm. you were, to me, that's a clown shit. Hmm. No one programs me. I program you. And actually, I deprogram you. And honestly, like, so where I'm from, um, what was that shit you were saying? Uh, uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, what Jim Brown was when, when they yeah. all get together? Yeah, the the, the, the um, intervention. intervention. An intervention where I'm from, if you doing something like, let's say, Lou or, or Daniel saw me smoking crack, intervention would be getting punched in the face. And I'm not smoking crack no more. It's over. Right. Mm-hmm. Where I'm from, the learning curve is a little different, but it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sure. it's better to hurt you now than to see you get die later. Right. Mm-hmm. That nice shit is a disguise for mm-hmm. evil. Right. You know, when they say the devil came as a snake, he ain't come as a snake. No. They would have ran. Yeah. He came as something fluffy and cute. Sure. He came pretending he was God or her. So I'm just hip to that shit. It ain't about how you feel. It's about the facts. If you get sensitive, then you have to say, I'm a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> you have to look in the mirror and say, why am I a bitch ass nigga? Cause I'm mad about the truth. No one's gonna do that though. The truth hurts. But that's what we're gonna do that. I mean, no. Honestly, you know, just stop. leave a bunch of comments. Stop. They might not, they might not say bitch ass nigga. They just leave a bunch of comments. But they might say this. <laughs> <laughs> they might Yo, I don't want to feel this way no more mm-hmm. when a thorough nigga talks to me because I can't say shit to him because he's doing everything right. Mm-hmm. So the question would be, if I'm throwing stones and I got a glass house, my house ain't glass. But actually it is because I'm transparent. I don't hide nothing. So because I'm honest about me and my opinions on everything else that comes by me, I have nothing to hide. But that's what a Harlem nigga do. <laughs> okay. It's but a Harlem you, thing. You get the difference between... Nah, 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 that ain't, that ain't completely... You get what's the question? Thing, like, why do I offend suckers? Not, I don't no, get it. No, why do I offend bitch-ass niggas? No, it's not Why that. do I fuck that's niggas' not girls? The question. Like, what is it? I don't get it. That's not the question. What's the question? You got the question from me, right? Like, you... I want to make I want to make sure you got the... You you understood what I was asking him. You were saying... Do I ever... You were saying... Do I ever think I should change my my delivery so I don't offend people. No, I'm not asking. That was my lamest term. Okay, got you. I don't ever want you to change your delivery. I know you don't. I catch flack in here for having the same kind of delivery. The way I talk to artists. How many CDs you threw away today? You mean being honest? Basically, but nobody wants to hear that part. But all them niggas do. I'm from Queens. You know, sir, <laughs> put like this. If, let me just say, if we I'm, want, from, I'm from South Jamaica. Certain so niggas, it's like this. I just want to see what this is. This is a different though. parallel example. Niggas making it a barrel. If we thing. want, if we forget the barrel thing, because no division, because division always divides us and it, it, it keeps us stagnant. Right. right. If we on TV, and I see that you got like corners or some mayonnaise or some shit on your shit, mm-hmm. if I tell you and you get mad at me, you a sucker. But if I tell you and you thank me. Then you like, thank you, bro. Then that's real nigga shit. There are dudes that get mad because you told them there's mayonnaise on their fucking corners of their fucking mouth on TV. Like who? I'm not doing that. Then I would be one of them. So who we told? So, all right, because this shit is going to confuse the hell of me. All right, Dame. Dame. Dame, what you like talking Vlad. about? Dame, you got Vlad. something on your oh, corner of your... You told Vlad? <laughs> you told Vlad he had mayonnaise? You told Vlad he had mayonnaise on his joint and it went left? Mm-hmm. How? He said, thank you. I don't want to talk about it. See, now you don't want to talk about it. Because I'm not giving nobody that kind of burn. He's in my rear view, but, you know, again, I'm just talking about Then you're connected to me. so many situations that... I've been here for 30, 40 years. Exactly, I've been doing but niggas is sitting in here like, why is it skipping so over long? topics, I've not been bringing people up and shit because we don't know if we can talk about it. Ask a direct question. Go ahead. Okay, you preach unity. Mm-hmm. You're directly connected to a legacy of... A lot of shit. Yes. But unified. Right. Why did it go left? It didn't go left. Okay, it didn't go left. Why, why you, you think it went left? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? 
Rockefeller? Rockefeller. I outgrew it. You outgrew it? Yeah. Because you were focused on rock Fashion. Yes. No, I, I wanted I know to do that. other shit. I know that. I, I, think about it. Like, right. I didn't want to, listen, I had daughters. Right. I didn't want to be around dudes all day. Right. I'm sick of that shit. Right. I wanted to be around things that were, like, different. Like, I, again, I listen to rock and roll because the street is traumatizing to me, bro. Right. This shit is real. These are my homeboys. You know what I'm saying? This shit is real. This is the shit you read about. I'm not proud. Like, oh, it's not tough to me. It's like, yo, I want to sit on a beach and chill out. Right. I'm not going to just enjoy my life. Because the thing about it is it, it, that life was taking me away from my daughters. I want to be a father. My dream was to have a family. My dream was not to be in I wanted to break a cycle. I didn't want to have a dysfunctional fucking family. I wanted to fucking really raise a child and play with a baby. Right. I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. That shit is corny. But if you ain't worried about your children and your house, you whack to me, bro. You know what I mean? When you shit. worried about what other niggas think about you before what your kids think about you, you're a fucking cornball. Right. But now, and I'm not going to judge look, you. I'm going to stay the fuck away from you. But now look, you see how you have to double back now. You're I have talking, to double back at all. No, you're doubling back talking to these kids in these schools and the kids in jail. Yeah, because they need us. Right. I can't forget about it. Because the example's missing, right? Because no they example. need the truth. They need to know exactly the, the program example. they in, and I need to make sure that I articulate in a way that doesn't trigger them. Right. Yeah. So the approach does matter. To the children. You articulate the way I just said to bitch ass niggas that don't. No, I got that. <laughs> so then why are you asking me? The kids, it's cool. I'm clarifying. The kids, I'm going to talk. Listen, I'm going to talk to the people I respect with respect. But if right. you're a bitch ass nigga, I'm fucking your wife. I was clarifying. <laughs> Glad I never had that problem. Oh, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Yo. Yo. I ain't gonna fuck your wife. Fellas, fellas, fellas. You a bitch ass nigga? If you a bitch ass nigga, I'm gonna let you know you a bitch ass nigga. (laughs) Two things. One, I wasn't asking, I was clarifying. I get it. I'm not, bro, I fuck with you. I'm just, I I need to, right. I I know what you're doing. Right. Two. That's why I'm answering. Right. And I. Yo, you know me. If I thought that it was different, I would have put it on you. Pause. Like, I, I don't feel that way. <laughs> you feel me? I would have been out of directed. You know, I don't feel that way. I know what you're doing. Right. I don't mind answering these questions. I like them. I'm I glad. Did, what, 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 what? Let me, let me, before I lose my place. Or else I'd be a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> before I lose my place. So, the perception of why Rockefeller ended is different. You're aware of this. It's because Jay did what he did. He, you know, he didn't want to pay three niggas. He, he made a move on his friends. It is what it is, bro. I don't want to talk about that. No, no, no. All I'm saying is the perception of why Rockefeller ended is not that Dame Dash wanted to move on and do something different. It that's, was. That's not, I believe you, that's not uh, the yeah. perception. Who cares? But you're aware of that. Nigga, sometimes you got to Machiavelli yourself to be left alone. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. So then DD-172 happened. Absolutely. But How you, much fun was that? But you, it was it was a ball. Changed the whole world. It was a ball. I'm still mad at Ski. Me too. Yeah, I'm still mad at Ski. We had a lot of people, but it's all good. It should have went way different than it was. It's all good. But the art galleries, was opening all that. Most fun I ever had, bro. Mm. Some, you know, it was great. And you I, stopped. Yeah. Why? Because I got too old to be watching niggas. I wanted to go raise my... What happened was my daughters moved to, uh, I, first of all, they ran me out of it. So what happened was, <laughs> we in Tribeca, and I'm throwing art gallery open, oh, and there'd be like a thousand people in the street. Police was cool. So one time we threw an art gallery open, and it was for like a Japanese earthquake. It wasn't a lot of people. And I wasn't even going to go to this shit, but I decided to go. And the white shirt, the captain, the hip hop police, they was outside. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I go out there and they like, um, the hip hop police nigga put me to the side. He was like, you know, this call came from the mayor. Somebody over here don't like you and he called with the mayor. I suggest you get out of here. We was doing a Japanese fucking, uh, uh, you art know, exhibit. art exhibit and the, the white shirt nigga was Japanese. And he was like, if you don't cut this shit down, whatever's going on in there illegal, I'm arresting you. So I shut the shit down and walked everybody out. And I paid heed to that shit. So I shut the shit down. I went to Puerto Rico and I'm telling everybody in DD once, they're not used to that shit. So I'm like, yo, we shutting down. The police, we hot. And they thinking it's funny and shit. But I shut that shit down. I went to Puerto Rico, came back, went to Brooklyn for a little while, caught a, did a, 
Got a penthouse and shit, a couple places, me and Skeet. Mm-hmm. And then I went and got a, 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 a gallery in the Lower East Side, I called the Poppins, but I went back around to uh, DD-172, and that shit was all taped up, and you could Google it, meaning the feds had ran in there and shit like that. Mm. Pasted, they were saying I was selling illegal liquor. You could Google it, it came out. So I was right. So I had to shut it down because it got too hot. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to Poppington, you know, shit was popping and shit, you know, then we all reconnected, but my daughters moved to LA. And they come first. So I just shut everything down with the LA. LA. But then I opened up shop in LA and I had, uh, you know, Dame Dash Studios in Burbank. And it's still there. And now I just opened up in Florida. So for me, it's like a club. Like the first time you go to a club, the shit is fly. The second time it's fly, but not as fly. And after a month or two, that, you know, that shit gets garbage. I need to be inspired. I need to change the scenery. I like to say, like I said, I like to run around the world. Mm-hmm. Really what happened was also when we did the uh, Breakfast Club, I was too hot. All of a sudden I had warrants, so I broke out. That was the, I had a dream, but I was waking people up. But I'm not gonna be Jesus and be hanging on a cross. Mm. If I already saw that Jesus had to hang on the cross or Yahshua. Mm. So I already know the truth teller gets betrayed. They gave us a blueprint of what it looks like when you tell the truth. Everybody betrays you. So I know, like, then I'm just going to be out of there. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'll just go disrupt another town. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that I'm lot of. I look at history and how it repeats. And I'm not going to be a victim. I know what happens to the good guy. All the bad guys try to make him look like a bad guy. You know, telling the truth to survive mm-hmm. comes with strength. Yeah. You cannot be a sucker. You cannot not know how to fight if you're going to fight. A superhero cannot be soft, but you got to fight the right fight. And I fight for love. I don't care about money. Money is too easy to make. And it's man-made. God made love. So that's the currency that I hustle for. And that's what makes me feel the best. I know too many billionaires that are fucking miserable. Mm-hmm. If you want happy broke, you gonna be unhappy rich. I was happy. I, 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 I don't remember being broke ever. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that? I was never broke, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't talking to me. Nah, I'm fr- I was fronting on you. I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard. It's a hard of day. He can tell you I had the Black Max when I was 15, nigga, right or wrong, all right? So, Dan, you, you don't listen to rap music at all? Yeah, I do. Oh. Nicolette raps. I listen to rap music, okay. but it'd be my friends. It's like somebody I know, or like on TikTok, you know, I know who Didi Osama is. I know who the young drill niggas is. I know what it is. Right. But I'm not listening to that shit in my car. You ever thought about sitting down with them? I would if they need the help, but I'm not trying to hang out with them. I'm not trying to exploit them. No. You know what I mean? I'm fucking 52. What am I, t- you know, I don't want to hang out with a 16 year old. Right. You know what I mean? Like my daughter's, you know what I mean? It's, it, I'm grown, bro. I want to be appropriate at my age. You know, real old school money just starts giving away money. That's what I do. I give it away. Can I get $100,000? You don't need it. <laughs> you don't need it. How do you, you're not economically <laughs> challenged and you have an education. So we don't need to give you anything. How do you, with you? I, I don't, I'm, I'm I'm curious to know how you would deal with the younger generation in general. Don't they, be curious. You should know. I go into the school myself. Not that. Not that. Not the hood. The, not that sect. That the hood. Entertainers. Oh, artists. Entertainers. They all come talk to me. What do you mean? I always tell them away. Nigga, you ask Flex who pulled this coat. Ask any one of these independent artists. You'd be surprised who I've been really cool with. Like a young Dolph he used to come see me all the time. No, I'm not surprised. Little Dirk, I'm in Little Dirk's videos. Not this, you know. Again, but. I, I'm always that person that's gonna tell someone how to win. What I'm was not, Dolph? What was Dolph coming to see you about? He was there was um he was in like a uh, there was like, I don't know what it was but I'm in his video, and then I made a movie and there was a lawsuit over that but I'm gonna get to that later, and he was in the movie Little Dirk. This is Little Dirk without braids. Mm, Little Dirk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Little Dirk. In L.A. and shit. He was in a movie with me. I was in his video and shit. I know what I, I I usually know people way before they break and I get where's Khalifa, Crit. Currency. Currency. 
Yeah. I, I never wanted to exploit the artist. I just wanted to hang out because honestly, I'm an artist, bro. I just want to be artistic. Like, I just want to just fucking make, I like fashion. I like directing. I like, I like, I, I just like being, I just think it's cooler to just do what you love. Right. You know, like, I, I, I'm like a, a, a stoner dude, bro. I get high all day, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, you see me, I like to I laugh. Saw, I saw. I think, I think life should be funny all day. I think you should enjoy it. I, I don't believe in worrying. I believe in having fun. Wor- worrying is praying. Worrying is praying to the devil. Exactly. Grandmother, you say that I, that's what I call it. Like people around me that are negative, I say they're possessed. They're possessed with evil. Mm. Negativity is evil. Mm. It fucks up everything. I'd be like, yo, you possessed. You need a fucking exorcism. Don't ever talk negative to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why you stop chanting from saying can. The only thing, exactly. You see how that triggered me. The only yeah. thing that triggers me is negativity. Visualizing the worst means you're gonna make it happen. I only visualize the best. I only I know what I see when I look in the mirror. I'm hyped every time. So when I visualize what I look like, it shit look good. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna visualize me having a fucking L. I only see me with a W, and I don't accept nothing until that visualization that I see comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. It don't matter how long it takes, as long as I'm having fun while I get there. You know how much fun it is to talk to my man? Because you know, you would think that me and Daniel sit around and talk about like, oh, this nigga killed this nigga. Nah. We talk about evolving. We talk about helping. We talk about the future, how to do things better, but just in a tough tone. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, he, he got this shit heaven up in Harlem and shit. Like he throws it, he's been doing it for 18 years just because it's instinct. He doesn't make money, he's just been doing it. Thousands of people come, no violence. And he makes the last money that he made everybody bring their sons so that they could meet each other so they wouldn't keep beefing. And whoever doesn't hug, he'd be like, yo, fuck y'all doing? You better give this nigga a hug right now. <laughs> it, it, it sound like he's robbing the nigga. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm like, tough love is some funny shit. He be like, yo, fuck you doing? Hug that man for I fuck something up in here. <laughs> he does that shit since the last The approach year. works. But the approach and it works. works. But right. the approach works. You know, so, you know, like I said, like, I, I watch a certain kind of charisma have people inspired to do what you're doing. You gotta lead by example. You gotta look cool while you're doing positive shit. If you look granola and broke while you're helping people, nobody wanna help. Right. Mm. But if you fly, you got cars, that's why the principals, they be fly than a drug dealer. You know, you gotta be fly. Cause mm-hmm. you want people to wanna be you. So if I can set an example of taking care of my kid, helping my homies, and, and them helping me and being cool and shit, but dressing well and still being swaggy. And other people, when, like I said, when I saw him walk across the street with his kids, that shit looked fly. And the reason why I look so fly is because I don't see it so much. Mm-hmm. It stood out. Yeah. A father stands out. Yeah. yeah. In this day and age. A black father. Like a black father. In a hood. You know, it was like it was worth the fight. Mm-hmm. But what I always knew was you can't raise your kids from bars. Yeah. And the burden you become the people you love when you go to jail. The people that you're trying to make sure are all right when you go to jail, you really fuck their life up. How did you feel when your artists were going to jail? I hated it. I hated that shit. That's the reason, again, that's why I started doing rock and roll. The reason why I stopped hip hop is because I couldn't have them around my daughters. Mm. I can't have men with unrecognized trauma around my daughters. You think I feel like going to jail over that? And I'm not gonna feel better if I have to hurt a nigga for hurting somebody I love. They just gonna die. Mm. You got a generation now where attention is the new currency. That shit been the currency, it's just easier. But but now it's, they feel it's more accessible. True. And for a lot of people who saw you, the way you saw your man walking, they see the fly dude tough with his kids and everybody looking at him doing this, but they don't see what it took to get that way. And That's they what, just want the end result. It's the purpose of these conversations. So now you're, I was there when, I met Currency through you. Right. I met Crit through you, right. over at the spot. That was that generation. The generation, couple, couple rappers down, these dudes just want clout and attention. They That's don't the necessarily program. want the You know bread. why? Because Leo Cohen is giving you a check if you do something that hurts 
where you fighting and it goes platinum on YouTube. You're getting paid for that. Mm. So the algorithm pays you. Even though education pays you more per stream. Not anymore. Pardon? Not anymore. They stopped that? Yeah. When? Yeah, there's, there's, there's all types of violations now. But they stopped it. You think I'll be podcasting right now? Fucking good. Check it out. <laughs> I'm TV joking. Show. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I'm joking. Okay, so TV show. Right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I love you for that. Um, <laughs> what was the question? I think you answered it. Thank you. I think you. What I wanted to say yeah. in reference to Dean is how, like, that whole approach of, of like, stinging somebody when you talk to them, I think it's very effective because it's... And they lucky. Really? I, I know no, I think it's a fact. Think about, about, think no, about hold this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm snapping nigga. on niggas that are calling that nigga, right? Nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I understand look, that. You don't understand. When I'm eating my whole... Everybody eats. Right. So when things would get fucked up, niggas would be like, this nigga fucking our money up? Mm. And I'd be like, just relax. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know what it is to be able to have the button? You only get that kind of power if you won't push it. Right. If you're trusted yeah. with it. That is a fact. You want to say what I mean? Because that's yeah. the test. I'm my enemy's savior. I'm the one that asks people to chill out on my behalf. Mm. You want to say what I'm saying? Mm. With so your vast array of knowledge, who would you say was your best teacher or your most influential teacher? There's been a lot. It depends on what time in my life. Overall? Overall, Muhammad Ali. Farrakhan, you know, I still kick it with Farrakhan. I check in with him all the time. Uh, not all the time, but like once a year, a couple of years, just to talk about strategy. He's the one that taught me about farming. He's the one that taught me about GMO seeds. We never talk about religion. We talk about helping, but the real help, you know? There's been so many influences in my life. At, 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 it was Russell Simmons. You called him your OG, I remember that. You know, because he was getting the models. I liked his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted to, you know, I was like, when I get the money, I'm going to do that. I don't want to hang out with niggas. Who the fuck wants to hang out with dudes all day? <laughs> I don't understand going to the club with a bunch of dudes. You can't get no girls. Yeah. It's, it's, to me, that just means you're scared. Like, dude, <laughs> the fuck? How many niggas you got to get 20 niggas in a club? Too much work. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, everybody influences me. It's just about, you know, because, like, again, like, I honestly was like, yo, how, how like with Daniel, I'd be like, this nigga, because he, he had the white bins with the B, you know, the white, the Momo, he had a really ill car, but he never went outside. You know, he didn't go to the rooftop. You really had to be in the know to know him. You had to really be in the game. So he made me snotty and hustling, you know? But like a guy like Lou that just never, I mean, I, I, he, he, I saw the shit he was doing, you know what I mean? So it was like, I saw the respect, you know what I mean? So it was like, yo, I, I need that, you know what I mean? Like, he's a funny guy, he's smart, you know, you're not a dumb guy. That's why he's still alive. So these are the guys that I have firsthand, like, you know, you can learn a lot from somebody from two generations down by reading, I got to see certain things. Like, I'm lucky. Well, it's impossible to come from Harlem and not be influenced by this. Yeah, yeah. But, but not to say not to, but uh, this was my man though. Yeah. Niggas were scared of him. Mm -hmm. This was a guy I talked to. Mm -hmm. This was a guy that'd be like, yo, yo, you all right? And I'd be like, you all right? You know what I'm saying? It was like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it was weird because uh, it would be like in the middle of a jungle, we, we all had our own, we, we were just like kids. The thing is with us is we still are like, we don't have to act tough. It's the only place, only place a tough nigga don't have to act is with real tough niggas. That's fake anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. we do, we it's the most relaxed. Yeah. yeah, so we can laugh and shit like that, but we really have real problems. His problems were way more severe than mine. But the fact, the way he dealt with his problems gave me strength. Oh, this nigga standing up, he not snitching, he doing all that time. And it wasn't a person that came home from jail that didn't tell me how ill he was in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be like, yo, like, you know, he did like 25, 27, how many years you did? So over that time, you know, Jeez. people would come home, I was with, every story was crazy. Oh, this nigga's a superhero in jail too. 
<laughs> fuck is you see he tried to like go past it they had to move him out of every jail in the east coast and put him in la because he already burnt out every jail mm. that's what happened correct so i even like yo come you know i've been trying to visit him but the nigga be in la i'm in new york how the, how the fuck you get to la <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere you go, he get moved. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is going on? But my point is, I'm firsthand seeing the effect of what it. When you're a legend at one thing, it come with thirty years. I would way have preferred to hang out with him for them thirty years. But you know what's crazy? When they go to jail, you get closer to him than a nigga you know, because you talk to him often. You know what I mean? So we right. talked a lot. We definitely, after a while, like we, we lose touch because I change the number here and there, and then he, you know, we get together. But it's ill bidding with somebody, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Something was said earlier, too, and I know that this is probably personal to some people in the room, but it is what it is, and I'm going to always say what it is. Jail is not cool. what you think, it's not something from the devil, right? The devil did this jail. Jail is something from God. And according to the way we live, some of us make mistakes. And jail, just like hell, is something that God has reserved for us. The police and the judges and the lawyers, they're just playing a role as well. They work for a higher power. Let me ask you a question real quick. Because a man not from our culture says something legal doesn't make it legal to God. So if someone from a higher part of our country says we got to go to another country and kill kids because we told you that that's legal, it don't mean it's legal to God. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And some of the things we in jail for are their rules, but we wouldn't be in jail if they were our rules. You know, the crazy thing is the people that we call criminals by society are heroes to us in the street because they he's a hero because he didn't snitch. Even though, regardless of what he did, the fact that he had the honor to be accountable makes him a man. What makes us more accountable is when we come and recognize the sin that we were in. Exactly. And be accountable for that. But is it a sin? I ain't gonna speak is it a sin when you defend is, is, is it a sin when you're defending yourself? Yeah, me. If, if, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you agree to a game and I agree to a game, fuck the law. Is it a sin? If by the, our rules, if you violate me, I gotta do something to you. But by our rules, that's fair. Our rules, not their rules. Is that a sin? I'm, I'm asking, was that a sin? It's a sin once I go against my parents because my parents are the ones who have been set in place for me. But if you don't me. have parents? I, I don't, I, it's I don't, a sin because you're breaking I can't, God's rules. Yeah, but let me finish. But God's rules? Survival. Wait, wait. So why is it not a sin if you kill an animal? It is a sin if you murder an animal. If I'm trying to hurt you, it's not a sin. In the original text, in the original text, it's not murder. Stop, 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 murder. Stop, 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 somebody touches my kid, if somebody tries to murder me, they deserve to get hurt. Different. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. And if you play a game where killing is part of it, you violate the game, it's a part of it, is that a sin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why is, why, so, so let me ask you a question, is hunting for sport a sin? I yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. I believe that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But how many people do that? And it's legal. And, and, and they well, need, I, I, they so need to learn. Saying. They Wait. need to hear the truth. Oh, right, here we, so that's what I'm saying. But people don't go to jail for that. That is what they, asking, but they still have to pay for what they did. What I'm saying is, you're, you're, whatever, whatever we do, we listen what I'm saying. Your survival for. is the law. Survival. To not get killed is the law. Now, if you just kill niggas for no reason, you deserve jail. Right. If a nigga trying to kill you because he did something to try to rob you and you got to kill him, you, it's, it's hard to say that but a nigga's- why is he a, trying to rob you? Regardless of why. No. He might be trying to rob hard. you, all right, because you the connect. It's but come on, all right, I, 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 if you have a lot of money and somebody tries to rob you and you hit him with a gun that's not illegal and the money might have been made by illegal means, you going to jail. It's a domino effect. So well, what's, what's, the, what's the, what's the, what's the, the domino effect what's the debate? again? What's the, the debate? I just want to make no, sure I'm... It's, I'm, it's I'm, not a debate. Uh, uh, it could be. What I don't mind. It? It's not a, it's not oh, a what's debate. What's the difference of opinion? What are you talking about? Right? I'm going to say this, right? I understand what you're saying. 
Sometimes people is placed in a position where they have to do. For That's what I'm robbery. saying. You know what I'm trying to say? In my case, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in the 60s, so I grew up in poverty. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I grew up with, you know, man, there was no pampers. My mom's had to wash, you know, my diapers out of the toilet, I mean, in, in the bathtub and all that. You know what I'm saying? So we didn't have that until our family fin. I came from a family of 10. Mm -hmm. So you got to remember, it was no abortion back then. So I had to come out and do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that I was taught from that is that whatever you do to get money, you bring back to the family. But at the same time, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to implicate is this. You know what I'm saying? These dudes today, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to move off the subject. These dudes to do today, they got more things in place for them, more opportunities to get money. You right. know what I'm trying to say? Than I had then. So therefore, it was a reason why I did what I did. Now, now I'm gonna say, I want to, I want to continue with this too because my education came from institution, from juvenile, from state jail. I learned. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna say this because a lot of y'all dudes look at Rich and the rest of them. If had they had the education I had from growing up in the household like I had, I'm not saying they didn't, but if had they had went to jail and at an early age, 16, juvenile and all that shit. They would have got that and they would have been able to deal with certain things that came along. See, I got that education in jail. You know what I'm trying to say? So when I went to the feds, believe it or not, I knew how to make knives. You know what I'm trying to say? How to put dudes on deck. Because I learned that from certain dudes that, you know what I'm trying to say? Black Panther dude that was in the jail, you know what I'm saying? Taught me, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, 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 my history of falls like, you know what I'm saying? So, so can, I, can I just build on that? So when I told you I went to the jails and I saw what they were teaching them, they were training them to go back into the community and justify doing certain things that we would consider criminal. It's not like people aren't stepping in. Like you said, it came from juvenile. This is what they teach you in there to survive. Right. So when you're born into an environment and this is all you know, it's not wrong to you. So you can't judge a person by the way they're programmed sometimes. That's why we all have unrecognized trauma. The first thing that I did when he came home was get him with a therapist. You understand what I'm saying? Just to, just to talk it out. And we did it publicly so people know it's not weak. So that we know that he's trying to improve himself. The second thing we did was talk to a senator about the problems in jail. Hmm. So that we can fix it so we don't have to have another loop. Because he's so intelligent, very clear and a good dude. But based on circumstance, this is all he knew to survive. He was trained to do this right. by our government. Right, what about so, Satan? All right, call it, you know, we all have different names for different Luke, things. How, how's the therapy? So it, it, is it? Well, the therapy was helpful, was, 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 was therapy. I said therapy. Yeah. It was therapy, but like, you know, I'm still going through trauma, like, my, you know what I'm saying, the females that I'm dealing with, they notice certain things, you know what I'm saying? Like, me getting in the shower still with my clothes on, with my drawers on and all shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Me being involved, laughing and joking and all of a sudden I get serious, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say? But, so, you know, it's, 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 it's coming along, but at the same time, like I said, it's, it's a process. It's a process. But you got to remember 27 years of process, and I've been through a lot. I'm not saying that a lot of dudes that went through my time, they did their time smoothly, but I did my time rough because I was holding out a state that was a bygone. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm, I'm saying this because all the young dudes that came along, I had to hold them down. So therefore, I'm going to lock down programs and I'm being suffering. I mean being locked down, you know what I'm saying, belly chain, shackles, me and my silly butt ass neck, they putting us in cells. You know what I'm saying? I got to turn my back while you go to the bathroom. And I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Certain yeah. shit like that. That shit is unhuman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That shit is unhuman. That's right. But at the same, same time, time, at the same time, let me just finish this. At the same time, I came out the way I am, you know what I'm saying, with a mind, but at the same time, I'm still traumatized because every now and then, I get flashbacks like, yo, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even with dudes that I don't know, or I do know, that look different to me, they come up to me like, yo, such and such, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still on point. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Who are you? Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still kind of traumatized. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's how, you know. But, but, but. On a personal note, he really, it's like no one knew who was going to come back. 
But he came back like, yo, I don't want to go back. Hmm. I don't want none of that. I don't want to have to worry about the things that I did because people don't understand why. And I don't want no use to go back either to that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You don't want well, none of that shit. At all. And that's a good thing. Right. It's a great thing. Right, but, 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 why, but why should you, but, 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 but imagine him as a little baby. You know what I'm saying? And what he had to go through to become this guy. So that's why I was asking him, like, well, what the fuck? Like, you know, I could ask him these things, like, what the fuck made you think you so tough? And all he did was hey. grow up like any one of us, man. <coughs> just like you in Brooklyn, just like us in Harlem. You know what I mean? We just stand tall. They knew we had to stand up. We was ready to die for that shit. At a young age, we'd be ready to die, bro. Yeah. When we get older, then worry about death. But when we young, we don't be giving a fuck. You know that. You're, you're not, not even expected. You're not, like even, you're not, you're not yeah. young. You're not yeah. even expected to make it to this, this age. Like that. Listen, I, t I tell you the biggest, the biggest thing that I feel like affects us as black men in these neighborhoods and what, what makes us just have so little respect for human life is not having something to be attached to. Right. That's why a lot right. of these kids are joining gangs and all that. There's no history for us to be proud of. Now, That's you, something you that used to plague is? my mind. Hold on, hold on a second. second. That's something that used to plague my mind when I was young. And it wasn't until like I exposed myself to like, uh, uh, a, a re religious, uh, religious groups or whatever, something that would give me a history to say, yo, you're connected to these great people and you're really from that bloodline. You know what I mean? Uh, well, okay. Without that, so, you just thinking, so you, oh, we were uh, slaves, and, and, they brought and, us and, over here, they brought us over here. And, and, and that goes back to the visuals we see. Right. To the movies we watch. Right. You're 100% right. There was a time, when it was, when, when, when it, there was a, there was a time. There was each one of us in this room is tough. I put a bullet in the nigga head. But hold on, hold on. That's the vibe right now. But hold on, hold on. And that's bad. Hold on, but what you were saying is right. There was a time when the Moors ran the planet. Right. We ran everything. But what you do when you conquer somebody, you erase you their erase history. Them. That's yeah. what you do. That's rule number yeah. one. Erase their history. Yeah, that's right. what we and teach us this shit. Yeah. So right. they, uh, they've erased the strength so it never happens to them again. Yeah. Again. I'm not mad at them, because when we was in control, they was our slaves. Right. And they don't want that to ever happen again. They were very strategic. See, a punk is strategic, hmm. real strategic. Real a scared strategic. motherfucker is going to make a map so he don't get hurt. <clears throat> a tough motherfucker is just going to walk in without a plan because he think he could deal with whatever. Right. We're, we're, we're taught to be tough, not strategic. We're taught to be tough with each other. Yeah. But we're not strategic about how to fight them. That's the worst part. And yeah. them is not a color. It's the people that are trying to oppress us. I don't, oh. the division thing, it's not a white or black thing. The bottom line is if I want to take over the world, how am I going to take over China without somebody Chinese? I don't speak Chinese. So I got to have somebody Chinese with me. Allies. I got to have everybody that speaks every language. So that's why when you look at me, it'd be like, I'm black enough. I don't need so many black people around me. I know how to talk to black people. I need to talk everyone's language. And the, the misconception is black people can only inspire black people. Why can't a black man have a white staff? You don't think a black man can lead white people? Why if a black man owns something that's in the black box? The reason why my television network isn't distributed is because they keep putting me in the black box because a black man owns it. You don't think I can make content good enough for white people? My shit good for everything. But the bottom line is the challenge of breaking through that barrier is, is an art. I'm having fun with it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like the fact that we got through the rough stuff already right. and we still here. You know how much fun it was to have my man Daniel on a Porsche with Stacey Dash in a movie? That was just like, just because, you know, it was like, bro. If we was back in the day, and I'm going to tell you like 20, 30 years ago, but I used to talk this kind of shit. Nigga, in 30 years, I'm going to have you in a movie. We're going to be doing interviews. I'm going to be the flyest nigga in the world. I was talking like, was we not talking like that? We, we all had this kind of arrogance. You know, but I was, I, and, and because I was presented, I didn't go through what he went through. Yo, Bab, you wouldn't believe that shit, right? Nah, I believe it. 
And you looking at this little nigga like, war, that's what you gonna do, Dude. son? <laughs> like, I was popping this shit back. Right. We, but did he do the shit? shit. Stop off. Crazy. But that's some home shit to me. And you gotta, you gotta bring it back that's and be like, oh, man. He said right that. There. So, thank you. He said so, it so you gotta think about how much fun I'm having right now. Right. Because I've really been through some shit. I seek my mans in the I, I never thought, when the niggas, you hear a nigga gonna do 30, he's dead. Mm -hmm. I'm never seeing him again. Right. He home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We get to laugh again. Yeah. We was in the bar right there. It's like the old days. I'm like, oh shit, I'm with my homies. Yeah. The niggas that I really trust. Right. I trusted them with my life. Like, who would rock? It was bad when he was outside, when he was on one. Right. I never had to be scared. I never ever felt that with him, ever in life. And that's a stat, because so many people did. Right. When I hear about, when I hear, <laughs> when I be hearing the records, I'm like, they're talking about Lou. When I hear the stories, I be like, this is my man. Right. This is the nigga I snap with. <laughs> you feel me? Right. So I miss them. I'm, I, you know what I mean? Like I was looking for Daniel because I'm like, damn, I ain't got nobody that I could really fuck with. Who the fuck I'm going to argue with? <laughs> you understand what I mean? Like to have friends is some ill shit. But to have real friends that been through something and you're not talking about trying. The one thing I never hear, no uh, let, let me tell you some other shit, right? right? So these niggas that I've been around that's supposed to be tough and all they talk about is being tough. I'll never hear him talking to no tough shit. All we be talking about is how to get money, how to help, how to keep all of us out of, not just him, all of us out of trouble. It's so all we talk about is the plan to do better. And that's why I still talk to them. So I know a lot of people, but I don't still talk to a lot of people. I have a very select group. You know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, my team is home. Like my original team. I can at least know that if we don't get no money together, we can still kick it. I can still get some advice. I, I still have someone that will challenge me. You know what I mean? Like a real nigga. No, yes, man, shit. What inspired you to get into filming, Dash? Because I just thought I was be I had too many experiences that I knew were better than ever. Like, you got to remember, like, this is real time. I, we, I saw this shit. So not very many people that saw it are in the position to make a movie. Right. So I'm looking at movies, and I'm like, the shit I saw is way better than all this shit. Mm -hmm. And I can make this shit. So paid in full is real. Mm -hmm. Way better than everything, because it's real. But I got to see it. Like, it's very rare that you get to see something and document it. But I had to really, I like the art of it. The thing about a movie is there's music in a the movie, so there's fashion in the movie, movie there's right. acting in the right. movie, the editing, the font, the way it moves. Wait till you see Prince of Detroit. Like, I'm nice. Like, I'm proud to be a director. See, everybody looks at me as a businessman. And I had the Machiavelli there. I'm like, I don't want to be a business. I don't even like business. I don't like it. I know it. I don't like it. Why don't you At, like it? Because it comes with bullshit. Anything driven by money is corny to me. It's bottle service. I don't do nothing for money. Wow. I take pride in to be able to say, yo, fuck you and fuck that. I'm out. I love that shit, bro. I love to yell at niggas that other niggas think are strong and I know they weak. That came from him. You understand? Like shit, he he just thought everybody was soft. <laughs> so I thought everybody was soft. <laughs> right or wrong? This, this, he thought everybody, he thought tough niggas was soft. I mean, he knew it. Right. And the shit he was going through was like real tough. Like he'd get shot and still be fighting and be on a cane. He had this limp and shit. Why you don't limp no more? He got <laughs> shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, He's in white. You got to get out of the people. shit. <laughs> like this nigga really, to me, I'm like, this thing is really a superhero. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but, but the thing is, because we're always in competition, I'm like, if he could be a superhero, I could be a superhero. superhero. You know what I mean? But I'm like, if I could take that toughness and do it legal, I'm invincible. Because nothing's going to bother me. Because I don't have to go through what they go through. So arguing with a lame nigga, you, like, you lucky I don't smack you. And I really was like, yo, I'm, I, I, you know what I mean? Again, I'm not a tough guy, but 
on the block after a certain amount of arguing, it goes to fight. Right, right. So I'll be like, yo, we don't do too much of this if we're not really friends. And you're not going to disrespect me. You're not even going to tell me you're going, I don't care about a contract. Right. Your word is your contract in the street. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I don't, that's the reason why I, like, I be in court and they be like, how did you do that with our contract? <laughs> nigga, I'm from the street. We don't do contracts. <laughs> Fuck you mean, niggas that you want consignment, you got to pay that. Or there's consequences. Or you think somebody's soft. Like, I would never hit him. I would never hit certain <laughs> niggas I know ain't got to pay me back. Right. You know what I mean? So, to me, this shit is a game. I, I survived the rough stuff. And now it's for me and my boys to make some money, have fun, you know, and provide an environment of healing, not survival. Why is healing so important? Because you got to move forward. If you don't know what's bothering you, it'll continue to keep you in the same place. And at the end of the day, the shit that bothers you bothers the people you love. Right. So if you care about the people that love you, like what he's talking about, you know, with the women and all that shit, mm -hmm. he's just so loyal. Right. He tolerate. I'm like, you tolerating that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you? Because someone rolled with him. He's just that guy. No matter what you think about him in the street, if he fuck with you, he fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the loyalty that he has and the Daniel and that we've had for each other, I, I haven't seen it in corporate. Hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I don't even expect it in corporate. Anymore. Yeah, anymore. In the beginning, it was like, this shit is crazy. So would, would you kill. say then you inspired you? 100%. 100%. 100%. When you say you, um, you don't see it anymore. I'm not outside anymore. Oh, OK. I, I'm 30 years spaces. removed from the street. I'm never, I'm not a street nigga no more. The shit that I remember, I'd be like, <laughs> I would never do that <laughs> right now, mm -hmm. ever. And the same thing with corporate. Corporate, I don't even comprehend that shit, bro. And then he got license home. He got his license to hold his gun. Yeah, I got a license for it to drive. I got a license for a thing. gun. Oh, I could keep it on me. Huh? Yeah, like, no, it's on. It's on? No, it's on. Where the fuck is <laughs> I ain't got no F some old four car. I'm good. Yo. You about to get into BET? Um, no, I wanted to ask. Um, I, you, I'm you listening to music you talk. We, we, can, we can shift the music. Go ahead. Uh, but I'm li I'm listening to you talk. Mm. And a lot about healing. About a lot about original team and being able to trust and 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 I, I'm I'm getting it, yo. This whole situation. Which one? From the music. Oh, that's like 20 years ago. Like 20 years ago. I can't remember, but I'll try. <laughs> but it put but it put you in another direction. It was just a phase, it's a chapter in my book, bro. But it wasn't just a chapter. Yes, it was. It wasn't just a chapter to you. It was to a chapter me. to me. Yeah, right. Right. So you're you're continuing on. Well, are you proud of that chapter? I just started. My run has just begun. Are you proud of that chapter? Hell yeah, I'm proud of it. Well, how the fuck would I not? Because you're not speaking about it at all. Because it's so far gone. No, no, you haven't it's asked not, me about it. It's I mean, not. A, I mean, I, BT's I, I, doing this greatest rap crew of all I time, right? I don't watch right? BT, my nigga. I, I, Do you feel like this shit is so documented? Come on, man. You can't say that. When I'm yes, playing. I could. I don't want to. All right, cool. I was That's trying to buy it. All right, cool. That'll so, be that. That'll be one of those things you'll have one take. <laughs> I guess I can. Looks like somebody's trying to get a deal with BT. That was hilarious. I got, no. I, I, got I, I got the question. James Dash to steal me right the round. Yo, last question talk. after this. Talk about it. Funny as hell. I got another about. question after this, though. I want to do this first. As far as greatest rap crews of all time, where would you rank? One. Rockefeller. One. Number one. You're supposed to. Supposed to. And I, don't, I expect any other crew to say that they were number one. But do you feel that way? Of yeah, course I feel that does. way. For me, I... I, I don't know about anybody's experience. I know about mine. Right. They gave me the life I have now. So yeah. Ask Hoffa, who's the best? Let, no, no, we got, we got, we got something. Right. We got something. 
We got yeah. something. We gonna go do it. No, no, come on. Now, now, they, now they, they, they've been doing brackets for weeks, and it's like a it's breakdown. It's depending on what you consider the best. Right. So for me, because what's your we criteria? Were, my criteria is making the, the the rapper a billionaire. Who got the most bread? Not not hit records, not influence, not not best this is lyrics. The, the best rap crew. For mm -hmm. the you have to remember I was in the crew. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I had I, I never during Rockefeller looked at another crew and thought they were having more fun than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the criteria can't be how much fun is the, is the guy in charge. Tell me what the having. criteria is, my nigga. Because you're the only one who can have that criteria. Exactly. So I'm the one that's going to tell you. It is. And that's that's number one. If we're judging all the crews. Who's eyeballs? The CEOs or his fan? Fans. I'm not a fan, nigga. I'm a participant in the game. You were right. also a fan of the dudes you had on your roster, though. Of course. That's why I signed them. Right. Right. So and people are I'm saying a fan. Okay. It's different when you watch the Lakers and play with the Lakers. Right. What's you the difference? You don't know that I don't know what it is to be a fan. I've only been a player. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what a fan should think. I Cole. can tell you what a player should think. Mm -hmm. For a player, it's who got the most bread and who had the most fun. Mm -hmm. Who's I'm 52. We talking about 25 years. That's how I know I did it. They still talk about, I haven't even touched Rockefeller Pause in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they still talk about it like it was yesterday. Yeah. I got to be the best that ever did it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pass it up, bro. <laughs> I ain't even had to do nothing. You feel me? Run all the right. brackets. Run the brackets. All right, so they got these brackets for greatest rap crew of all time. Um, I'm just gonna read off the names that's paired up right now, and you tell me who you pick. Wu Tang Clan versus Rough Riders. No. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Those not both, one? They both my brothers, bro. Yeah. It's 50 years later. If you would have asked me back then, I would have been like Rockefeller. Right. We battle these niggas, you feel me? But these are my brothers. These are my brothers. You don't judge your brothers. Right. Like, I'm not going to say, yo, who is the best hustler? Me, Lou, or Daniel? Nigga, we still friends, so we all the best hustlers. Right. We fought a war, and we still friends. You said Rough Riders and who? Rough Riders Wu and Wu-Tang. Yeah, they both my friends. RZA and I just did block talk with D and Wok. Mm. And RZA and, 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 you know. Shout out to D. All, uh, he definitely picked, though. Uh-huh. D, D picked. definitely picked. Pick. I don't care. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> he definitely I picked. I get it, but right. I'm not. That's what makes me different. Next one. Next one. See yeah. if you'll pick the next one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. see if he'll pick the next one. And Divine? Yeah. I'm going to do that. I got to talk to Divine and talk to well, Divine. See, I got to talk to you. See if you'll pick the next good, one. Good music versus hypnotized minds. What? What's that? Hypnotized mind. Three yeah. Six Mafia. Project I'm from Pat. here, Project so I'm going to say, I, I, again, Kanye with me, so I'm going to say Kanye. Good music. Right. He's supposed to. Anybody from there is supposed to say that. You know what I mean? Next one. Keep going. Death Row versus TDE. Top I mean, goal. I was Death Row because I'm I'm 52. So you know what it was when. Yeah, but I really that's a uh, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. I fuck with Kendrick Lamar. He's a lyricist, you know, a, with a Pulitzer Surprise. True. It depends on what you consider a win. That's why I was asking for your criteria earlier. There is no criteria. And you shot me up. But this is greatest <laughs> crew. Sorry. As soon as I mentioned, this is greatest you crew. shot me up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I, I'll give it room again. No, nah, just whatever your criteria. I would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a judgmental guy. I think judgment is. It, I don't. I, I honestly only like to think about me. I'm well, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I don't do this thing. Like, I don't look at niggas and be like, he's better than this thing. I'll be like, I'm the best. That's all I know. Yeah, I, love I don't that. have time. To, I, I I I don't like dudes very much, so I don't admire <laughs> them. I don't look at them. I don't critique them. I don't rate them one to ten. I don't compare them. Right. I if I'm gonna talk about, I'd rather talk about women. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. talking about niggas is like, what am I? 
I'm in the room. Why would I talk about another nigga? So, yo, so who's the females in these groups? Yeah, let's go female. Yeah. Which I'll group? I'm inspired. All right. Def, Def Row and TDE, who's the females? Michelle Lady, Lady, Lady Rage. Michelle Scissors and TDE. Scissors on the other side. Scissors and TDE. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just two different things right there. Come on. One's a singer, one's a rapper. You talking right. about Afro Puffs? Well, Michelle A. <laughs> Michelle A. Singing. singing in the shower. <laughs> Scissor, you sing it's in the shower. Right. Girls sing in the shower and wash themselves in the Right. And other girls just load up guns to fucking rage. It's two right. different things. Right. Exactly. Hey, what about the first lady of rock? Which one? Who's the first lady of rock? Emil. Emil? Emil? I dropped Emil. Well, I love Emil. <laughs> Everybody loves a meal. We all get hungry. <laughs> next one. Next one. Next right. one. Next one. YMCMB. Emil was cool. No disrespect to Emil. Yeah. Shout out to Emil. Shout out to Emil. Shout out to Emil. Um, YMCMB versus So So Deaf. You're going 90s versus 2020. Yo, this, this is where the bracket is. This is where we hear that. They voted. They voted. We hear that. Asking a 52-year-old. I remember this. Oh, I don't really listen to current shit unless I know them personally. Okay. I, I don't. I I I I I love hip hop. I love all genres, but shit really gives me flashback. You see how he said he got flash? I I don't want to. I don't. I don't like bullets. I don't oh, like God. to hear about guns. Right. I don't like to hear about that shit. Right. You know, like I made it out the jungle to fucking get to a beach. Right. So I listen to things that soothe my soul. When, when, I'm not worried about being tough, so I don't need to hear anything to make me feel tough. Right. You know, music makes me feel the way the music is. Like, if I hear some smooth music, I feel smooth. If I feel some violent music, I feel violent. I don't want to feel violent. I surround myself with female energy. They don't want to see a tough nigga. They want to know that they're protected and that it's supported. Right. But they want a nigga that wants to do art and yoga and look at the beach and laugh and watch movies. And that's the type of shit I love doing. Nah, some of them want the tough nigga. But you got to think about what kind of woman that would be. You think that, though. Yeah. You got to think about what kind of woman you're, that would I be. I want to tell you this, that you're wrong. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. They don't want a tough nigga. They want a dude that's going to listen, respect them, not abuse them and worship them. And that's, I worship women. I love women. They make life. I don't see man as God. I see woman as God. Yo, the reason, think about it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Right. Now, now, now Lou, Lou is a real nigga, right? He just said he's used to taking pause, showers with drawers on because niggas was watching. Right. If he was in the girl jail, he wouldn't be wearing no drawers. I'm women up naked. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Like, who want to be a dude? Who got Yo, you know what I mean? right. Like, I'm not gonna lie. When I'm hurt, I cry. Right. I'm not. I. I. When Aaliyah died, think I cried in front of everybody. I don't want crying in front of no dudes. I don't want no dude rubbing my shoulder. I want to be comforted by female. That's just right. me. Yeah. I'm not knocking nobody right. else. Right. But me. Right. I don't want to be around niggas all day. I was already. I already did that shit. I don't want to be tough all day. Even when I win a fight, my knuckles hurt. You mean all yeah, my knuckles yeah, is broken, bro? Yeah, mm -hmm. All of them. All, right. Both my feet from fighting, from winning them shits, I always end up having to heal. Bro. Mm. Bro. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Bro. I ain't gonna lie, I broke a couple of joints. So, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you an example, out, right? Let me tell you, let me tell you. Stuff. Look, look. Yeah. Today, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in a room, clean. I'm in a car, you know, Nicolette, El Boogie, Raquel, and I'm tight about something. And if it was niggas, I'd have been arguing all day. Before I'm gonna get too abusive with a woman, I'm jumping out the car. Right. 
I'm not even gonna do this because I'm gonna get too mean. Let me just get out the car. I'm gonna just Twice. take a walk, smoke a joint, walk the dog. You know what I mean? It would have dude, it would have been like I gotta stay in there. Right. I don't like to feel. I don't like when I'm mad at somebody. It don't feel good. Hmm. If I gotta fight somebody, it don't feel good. I'd rather laugh than be mad. Right. I don't like being mad. Right. So when I'm mad, I get it over with. I don't hold it because that causes cancer. I don't internalize something which makes people uncomfortable. But I'm not gonna internalize the truth. And I'm. A, I, I just don't see. I just think it's cowardly not to be honest. But I'm not gonna ever abuse people. If I'm conscious that I'm triggered with a dude, I'm, I, I deal with it different. But with a woman, I, I try to stop it because I, I don't want to abuse no girls. Right. I don't want to abuse no puppies. I keep myself around babies. I haven't changed. I changed my environment. Environment, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the same but, shit. Makes but in a mad. way, in a way, you know, being being vegetarian now, mm -hmm. that kind of takes a lot of aggression. No, I'm still aggressive. I'm, I'm still aggressive. <laughs> still aggressive. Yeah. Uh, but you're cognizant of your aggression. I'm I've always been cognizant. You got to remember, Rockefeller, I was a character, bro. I just did what I had to do. But as you see, what, it was a roach? Nah. As you see. <laughs> you know, you know yeah, we on the east yeah. side of Harlem. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't seen a roach in like a long time. Yeah. I was about to say, where's the roach? I ain't seen yeah. one. You just got raccoons in Harlem. As, as you see, as you see. I forgot. What was he talking God about? damn it! I was where. Uh, what was he talking about? We were talking about how happy you are with life now, and you. I said you were cognizant of your, of your yeah. aggression. Right. As you see, nothing's changed. I'm the same guy. You know what I mean? But my environment is schools. I'm not selling records. I'm selling books. I'm selling movies. You know. I, I really like to do something that's going to help instead of just talking about it. Mm -hmm. When I walk in the street, niggas don't talk to me about Rockefeller. They talk to me about my last interview. It's about what I'm currently talking about. But I was talking about this shit before, but there wasn't no internet. Mm -hmm. Nobody was listening. Right. And doing interviews a form of therapy for you? Hell yeah. yeah. Talking is always a form of therapy. Go, go, you, you know how good it felt to go into the bar? What's the name of the, what's the name of the ball he's in? Dan? Lorraine's. Lorraine's. And, and, and see Lou and see Daniel and see my all these people that I grew up with, happy, laughing, like it's the old times. And we all kind of got cars, niggas all look good. Motherfuckers is healthy, free, like Lou was here. Mm. That shit was bugging me out. I'm like, oh shit, I'm with Lou. Mm. I ain't been with Lou since the fucking 90s. Wow. Mm. The 90s. But they, like, you know, I, you know, I talked to Lou a lot when he was in jail, so they, all the people around me talked to him. It was the first time you met him, right? But you know him. You know, my son knows his voice. Uh -huh. It's crazy how a nigga go to jail and you become closer to him than the people that are not in jail. Yeah, yeah you said that. That's but the mean. thing I'm most proud of mm -hmm. is he doing better than niggas that was home all 30 fucking years. Oh, you stepped on his pain. It's okay. Yo, Ha, you know when you was young, you always kept your growing older to certain niggas seeing them 30 years from yeah, right. Thank you. Right. How many of your niggas is here now, bro, 20, 30 years later? And how like many niggas we lost? All the niggas I grew up with ain't none of them niggas around. These niggas. Four. These, yeah. And Four. It's, it's, how old are you, bro, my niggas? I ain't going to answer that one, Ken. That nigga 25. I'm trying to drop an album next week. Nah, and that's what you're doing. You know I'm in a rock group, right? You don't huh? get less and less. I'm in a rock group. You're in a rock group? You're yeah. in Like you're part group. of it? Don't play with oh, you. You ain't know that shit. Never, never heard that before. I'm are you kidding? The Black Guns, you know what I'm The Black Guns, yeah, the Black Tell Guns. Tell name, bro. Billy, pa name. Billy Pablo the Third. Billy Pablo. I'm Wait, singing had, this there, shit. There was a rock where we had a DD-172. That was the Black Keys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, that was the number one rock group in America. You in a rock group? Yeah, I've been in a rock group. Six, I got six, a million streams. You writing children's books. Yeah. More <laughs> movies on the way. Comic books. Television network. 
streaming service. Rehab I got service. a movie coming out. See, to me, the flex is to be able to do everything yourself. Because mm. if I really wanted to flex, i go buy a company in distress, raise some money, and I'm on. But I like to build brands. I like to really design, you know? Like, I'm nice at fucking designing fashion. I'm nice at directing music. I'm, di I'm nice at even being on the stage. And you got a good ear for music. Good ear for music. You discovered you. Kanye. And, thank you. And, mm -hmm. and right. curriculum. I like to showcase that I'm nice in everything. Right. And I'm having fun with that. Like I, I did the business already. I got you gotta remember, I got the I'm fifty two. I got to retire at thirty five. You ain't seen me outside since I was thirty five. This niggas like niggas think I got gray hair now, all type of shit. White joint. You ain't seen me in that long. I haven't had to come outside. You know what the luxury is of being able to wake up with your baby and your girl and be able to move when you want? That's, a That's blessing. wealth. Mm -hmm. When you could disappear. Thanks. And especially when the internet, I y'all can see my life on Instagram. But yeah. I, I ain't got to smell your breath. Because <laughs> <laughs> niggas don't care if they breath stink. They still talk to you. <laughs> right? If you smoke a hundred brunts and don't drink nothing, your breath going to stink. How you going to talk to a nigga? <laughs> and expect him to be all right when your mouth smell like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I know? It's a lot of celebrities. They think they breath can stink. The, so the right, most they, they famous niggas got stink. the stinkest mouth. So I yeah, be like, man. yo, did nobody tell you your breath stink? <laughs> 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 so I don't like to smell people. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like to smell the ocean and good food. I like to chill. When you high, you don't want to fight. You want to relax. Right. I like massages and shit. Who the fuck wants to be hurting somebody? That shit hurts. I like to love and be loved. My love language is physical touch hmm. from the opposite sex. <laughs> <laughs> no pause needed. <laughs> yeah, you had to Yo, take care of that one. I didn't have you to, to take care but of I wanted one. to be clear. And again, no disrespect to nobody. But individually, I know what I like. My dreams are different than people's. They're supposed to be. they my dreams. What I like is supposed to be. You can't judge me for what I like, but I'm not judging you for what you like. Right. With but don't, as long as your hustle don't fuck my hustle up, you could evolve at your own pace. Now, now I got to ask. Listening, you know, knowing everything and how you were perceived and all that. Do you think in America, once you become a successful black man, they try to make you look crazy. I think they try to make everybody look crazy for money. So the thing about me is when things are negative and said about me, people, it's clickbait. It's profitable. Right. So when you're successful, anything not successful is profitable. It's about profit. So there's a yin and a yang of everything. So you're going to have bad days, you have good days. I don't take none of that shit serious. Did I just tell you where I just came from? This shit is a joke to me, bro. Right. The fact that I'm famous is funny to me. He, Daniel, how, much, how many times you had to tell me, nigga, you really famous? I'm not famous. Even you don't understand, I be like, yo, I don't look at it like that. I look like a regular, I feel like I'm. A, 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 it's more fun to be a regular nigga with superpowers than to expect everything to be normal. Right. To be able to appreciate everything is so much fun. You got to be broke to appreciate being rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to feel some pain, pause, to actually <laughs> appreciate when there's not pain. pain. So in a, in, in, a, in a funny way, my mom's died when I was young, and I saw a lot of fucked up shit young. So I was able to appreciate everything else as I'm older. After Aaliyah died, unless you die, I'm not unhappy. You understand? Know like, you can't broke. Bill, a problem, you, 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 unless my girl dies in a plane crash, it doesn't bother me. Unless somebody's dead or in jail or sick to where they're about to die, everything's a joke. My condolences. 
Um, I, I, we never spoke in person about it. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? But like everybody dies, bro. Yeah. It's just a matter of when and how you deal with it. How did you deal with it? I cried and went to therapy and I had a lot of fun and I have dreams that I was fighting for. So I'm like, damn, everybody dies, but they don't get to die and, and go back to a big house in a private jet. And then 9-11 happened. I'm like, all these people went through something similar, but they still got to go back to a regular life. I just appreciate the fact that I survived. Everything else is bullshit to me. And now I'm hustling for my grandchildren. Like, getting money is too easy. Like, I could always buy a two-seater. It's easy if I'm selfish. You know, being fresh and having a nice house is the easiest thing in the world to get. And a nice car. You know, but it's really like I take pride in how much my kids are enjoying my our success. Yes. Right. And being able to say, yo, you, what, what, what do you want to do? Like, you want to run the sneaker company? You want to develop the football league? You want to run the clothing brand? See, yo, so let me explain the difference between now and then. So let's look at Rockwear. Mm -hmm. Me and Jay are partners. And then I got to go get a, another 50% partner, two Russians that own 50. So I only own 25%. Just 25%. The people that own half should just been renting our brand, not owning it. And it's not about me. It's about everybody. I can't pass it to my kid. You know what I'm saying? So I had to make my own brand. Something that's 100% mine. And if I get with someone that's going to give me volume, you could license it. You could rent it from me. I'm not giving you half. Right. I did this with Rockwear, Rachel Roy, Russell did it. We all did it. We always had 50% partners just because they had a juice at Macy's. And they had production knowledge that we didn't. Now I got my own brands. I was always known for making other people rich and showing them how to make their shit fly. I can't pass another nigga's fly to my children. So I had to take 10 years, and I, I spent 10, 20 years helping other people. So they get 10 or 20 year head start, and they also like to use other people's money. But for me, for the freedom and the futuristic shit I wanna do, I don't expect nobody to believe in my vision if, if, if I'm not paying for it. I don't want you to pay for my fucking dream, and then that becomes your dream, not mine. So for me, it was like, I know how to make money with other people's money, but I want to make money with my money. I want to make my own brands, and I want to be creative. I want to be able to be in a rock group and not care if it don't sell. I want to be able to direct a movie and have it come out in theaters and do it on my own and, and make movies about what I want to make movies about, have my own streaming service, have my own television network, make my own children's books. Make my own comic books. Make my own magazines. You know what I mean? That shit's fun to me. It's not fun to me. Like, money is not the fun. It's the challenge of life. Like, I did the drug dealer shit. I've been with the illest niggas that ever did it. That's in my rear view. I never have to wonder if I could survive around a legendary gangster. I did that on my own. And I could have did it without them but I chose to do it on my own. Again, I can't even talk about my family. You know what I'm saying? So at this point in my life, I'm like, this shit is fucking fun. I'm having a ball. And I'm the guy that can say whatever I want, whenever I want. And I'm only saying good shit right now. <clears throat> and I could be fly, I could go into play, I could go into jails, I could go into schools, I could go into anywhere and talk good shit. Why a rock group? Because I like, I like instrumentation. I'm aggressive. I want to punch you in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> punk rock. I'm not even rock. Right. And you should listen to this shit because you're going to like it. I challenge you to listen to my shit. You can go to Spotify right now. Go to Therapy by Dane Dash. And you know what's crazy? I do rock, I do when I do a rock concert or like a show, you have a, a, a Daniel in the crowd, and you also have models in the crowd. You have such a mix of people 
people that come to just say, yo, I'm gonna laugh at this, and they rocking out, and we having mad fun. Only thing that stopped us from doing shows was the um was COVID. Hmm. And you know, I'm diabetic, so I wasn't fucking around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But now I'm out, I'm outside. <laughs> I'm back outside. outside. And, and my blood sugar is at 6'9", so I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a diabetic will understand that. My A1 is a 6'9". I'm a professional diabetic. A professional mm -hmm. diabetic. We got sneakers out. We got movies out. We got Where's books sneakers out. Sneakers right What's the name of sneaker? So let me yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So these folks 270, which is cheap. If you're an independent business, then I book. Mm-hmm. God damn it. So I, I like the independence. I like I like what you're doing. You know? And and, and it's my man right here, the intellectual. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, yo, let me make sure. They let those come out. Those are the blue boys. What's the CEOs. Name of them? Those are the seat. Take them out. Take them out. The CEOs. Jack Claire CEOs. And I'm gonna man. give you 10 different styles a year. Different uh, mad yeah. colors. Yeah. Those are fire. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that, was <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. You're a real sneak ahead. Like, CEO. You know, might want to frame those. You got to bite the bubble. Right. Unless you need an LLC yeah, for sweet, these, all right? right? <laughs> Can't wear these with an LLC. Sweet. The next one is going to be vegan. Mm -hmm. uh, those ones. Whatever color, I got y'all. You know, I just, I, it, what happened was after we put up, just off the design, everybody bought them. I, I was, I ordered samples to give my friends, but everybody bought them. So, you know, again, like I'm transparent. So I always show everybody while I'm developing things. So as soon as people saw the design, they thought, I, I don't even have a pair. Cause they all sell out, mm. you know what I mean? And and you know, what's the name That's of those? CEOs. It's the CEO Jaclair Collab. Yeah, CEOs. Jacques CEOs. Claire. CEOs. 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 Bang bang. Your name is still sound bang. like something, Jaclair. Mm -hmm. It's it's an old brand. <laughs> it was a Jewish brand that my man Willie Esco bought. Mm. Um, we reverse engineering. They usually buy us. We right. bought them. That it has heritage. So you know. You can't, I didn't want to get into the sneaker game. Remember I had Pokez? Mm -hmm. I just don't believe, I don't know, I don't want to wear like a suit company that makes sneakers. I don't want to wear that because they're not specialists in sneakers. Mm -hmm. So I felt like you had to, you know, you had to get with, get with someone that has heritage, mm -hmm. you know, so it's legit. So it was like Pokez, but that deal was stupid, but this is a good deal. You know, you're smoking? I'm walking in the business meeting. <laughs> I'm throwing the CEOs. Absolutely. CEO. And next month there'll be another stop. Bow, bow. Thank you very much, sir. Uh -huh. ah. I definitely was about to forget. You're looking for the assist. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Listen, black guns. Yeah, you see, I can play it. I got videos. I documented the making of it all live. I got the best guitar player on the planet. And he's from Harlem. He's black. Hmm. Cash. I just got one question for y'all, brother. Yeah. What y'all think of Bill Gates fucking with this farm and shit, doing the food thing and all that? He's ahead of the curve. You know? You gotta remember when you're a billionaire, you get. Like, to me, I believe everything so we know. Uh, let's put it like this If you knew how to read people's minds, would you tell everybody? Hell no. You think the if, so if the government knew how to read our minds, you think they'd tell us? Um, so the, the the technology that's available, I, I feel like they've kept us 100 years behind the yeah, that's for control. Do you remember a show so called... When you have a certain amount of money, <coughs> you'll be able to know everything first. You remember a show called Beyond 2000s? Uh-uh. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with this show. It used to come on on Sundays on Fox. It was called Beyond 2000. They used to show you all the futuristic shit that we would have by the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I remember that shit. Went through life, got to the year 2000, I don't see none of that shit. But it all exists. Look at the Jetsons. The Jetsons is supposed to be now. The Jetsons yeah. is supposed to be now. Back to the Future, we already way past, past, past Back that. to the Future. Mm -hmm. So you got to remember, like, they're going to keep us dumb to keep us fucking controlled. All you got to do is watch the Twilight, bro. 
Listen, you know, my old, man. One of the old episodes, they brought you, they brought you, they brought you right where you at now. Uh-huh. Nah, you gotta watch The Simpsons. Yeah, what you, gotta <laughs> you gotta watch check. The Simpsons. The yeah. Simpsons been projected everything, gotta, what bro. What you gotta check is my man Billy Carson. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it, 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 a lot of stuff is about space travel, the Anunnaki's, but it's all logical, it's all the scripture. A lot of what's been presented to us is, you know, anything that's been presented to us is always to me to control us. I don't believe anything that's been presented to us. So I always look at what's logical. Right. I don't care about how I feel. Mm. And that's probably why, back to what you were saying, my delivery is harsh. It shouldn't matter the way I'm saying it. Should just listen to what I'm saying. I know it shouldn't. I know it shouldn't. And, 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 and I'm, I'm not saying it's you. I'm saying it's just No, you're not talking. You're not the talking people that are offended, pull your fucking skirt up. That's really how I look at it. Because if I would have reacted like that, I would have just got smacked in the back of my head. And I would have appreciated it later because I don't want to be a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think, can I, can I, can I interject real quick? I think that- Move up some, so they can see. I think we also have to consider that, that generally speaking, there's an old saying that says, uh, when you throw a rock at a pack of wolves, the one that howls is the one that got hit. And I've, I've worked directly with Dane uh, at Rockaway, and I can honestly say that after following him and taking a rule out of his, uh, you know, several rules out of his playbook, um, I started to understand what he was talking about whenever he was he would deliver his message. Right. And what I realized is that a lot of people that that get affected by what he says. You mean offended. Uh, well, offended it's overcompensation it's, because you're not fighting. I'm telling you, what he's saying is he started as a person that was an employee that got a boss mentality. I talk in boss. So if you talk an employee, you're going to be offended by me. But a boss doesn't get offended by what I'm saying. Right. Can everybody be a boss? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I talk in boss. Man. It's not for me to say, it's not everyone can be a boss. They have the potential to be a boss. But do they want to be a boss? No. That's, Most people that's don't. subject to the individual. Most people don't. To add on to that, what I've also realized is that like I said, after taking several plays out of this playbook, I started to actually think and talk exactly like him being around my circle of friends or whoever I came across, you know, trying to- You know why? Because you were frustrated because no one was actually understanding what you were <laughs> right. saying. Right. But what the so fuck now, is wrong with you? So now it's I frustrating. It, right. yeah. You know what so I mean? Now, this shit is logical. What's what, why would so you not want to be rich? So fast forward. So fast forward, I get a, um, a message from a friend of mine. Because some people who, uh, ain't built for it. So that's on them. I get a message yeah. from a friend of mine one day, and he's like, yo, and mind you, it's not anything that I'd that I that I'd like to talk about, you know, my past. I don't like putting my resume out there like that. But mm. I, get a, I get a message from a friend of mine, and he, um, he sends me a, a video. And he was like, yo, this guy reminds me of you. And I open it up, and it's Dane talking his talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I say that to say that... Um, a lot of it is based on people's uh, lack of understanding and more so being offended, like you're saying, right. by what he's saying because they feel like he's talking directly about their situation and what they're going Because they hit dog is hollering. Exactly. Bro, exactly. I, I completely understand that. My philosophy has always been, number one, I'm not mm-hmm. arguing with anybody that Harriet Tubman would have shot. Number two, <laughs> not everybody is, not everybody is meant to go with you. Some people are are leaders. Some people should be led. And there's no disrespect to either role. But I don't believe, I think a lot of the confusion we have today, industry-wise, which is what I deal with directly, is that we put a lot of people who should be working in the boss's chair. They want to be able to say they're the boss. But they're not the boss because someone hired them. Well, or, or, they took their money, they got in position, and they don't have this to lead other people. They just want to be able to say, I'm in charge, I tell you what to do. But He's you don't not, know that how person's to lead. hired. Mm. That's mm. a hired person. A founder makes something based on what inspired them. You know? When someone gets hired, it's for the money. Mm-hmm. And money is insecurity. Like I said, it's bottle service. Money don't make you cool. 
You know what I mean? To me, anybody that does anything for money is a cornball. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, anything for money was like respectable. Mm -hmm. You know, but to me, it just never was because again, money is man made. I'm not going to be a slave to a man. Ever. So Paul. I'm the only one that thinks Bill Gates and I'm just putting shit in our food. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going with it right now. Remember, 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 remember what he said earlier? Um, remember what he said earlier about trusting your oppressors to feed you? Exactly. Right. My so, answer for that question is in that is is in right. really trying to Bottom, shut down the population of, of, of Earth right now. They don't care yeah. if you're black or white. A hundred percent. They try to control it. They try yeah. to put you in one place. But once you know it, it's your job to protect yourself and your family. Everybody else, if they want to be dumb and not listen, it's on them. That's why you said some real shit to Hoff. You said, yo, you getting money and all that, but you eat poor. That shit made me really like, yo, you know what? You right, bro. Because we know. Right. We know it's a lot of bullshit in this fool. We know what's going no, on. Two. Now we got to step our game up. If not, look how many niggas getting cancer. Yeah, yo, yo, I'm vegan yo, six vegan days out of the week. Right? You be Except six today. days out the week. That's good. <laughs> then I go eat some bullshit. Right, right. Let but me, let me just end the beat one time, right? Because <coughs> a lot of y'all get caught up with this how to eat, right? That's mm. what I'm saying. Exactly. I did a lot of study throughout the years, right? Mm. Back then, you got to realize our ancestors lived to be a hundred and something years old eating pork. It's because the way they cooked it. They cooked it for overnight. You know what I'm trying to say? Your mom probably put some chillies on it. They cook it overnight. They cook the all impurities out of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. They cook the impurities out of it. That's what that's what it is. But at the same time, you got to realize the way we eat now, everything is a rush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's fast. You cook a pork chop, it got to be 15 minutes. You know what I'm right. trying to say? Right. So you know what I'm saying? You got to do your you got to do your real. You can't just read what's with, what's written right right there. You got to read all. You got to read the fine print and all that shit when it comes to eating. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to go into how you eat. Or you know grow your own shit. Right. Like I said, I got my way of eating, you got your way to eat. But at right. the same time, you got to realize your ancestors cooked that pork for overnight. She cooked some chili. But they killed, the balls cooked it. Let me but they killed that pork. They, they nobody that gave them the pork. Yeah. From, one, from one day to the next day. And, 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 they, and they bled it out. Differently, right? That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. They hit, they hit the arteries. They're not drinking the blood. It's a whole lot of, they, 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 it's a whole different. Whatever you gotta realize somebody. all that. You know what I'm saying? So you can't take. Well, I'm not gonna eat no pork because it's killing me. You know what I'm trying to say? But right, we ain't supposed to eat it anyway because it's telling you in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, and all that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we got to realize, you know what I'm saying? How it was cooked back then and how it was cooked now. You know what I'm saying? So we can't get caught up on what we gonna eat. It's how you eat it. No, it's also they what you sell, eat also. Yeah, they right. sell us you know food I mean? in the U.S. They wouldn't even sell in a lot of other countries. It's illegal. Like it's illegal in other countries. Yeah. And all that bubblegum shit yeah. and food uh, letting us eat. We, a lot of countries, they no, won't even no, let you no, sell these products. No country. So is it about money or they really trying no. to scrape us? Yo, you ever had KFC in Canada? We got, we got, yeah, hard. that shit is good. It's mad different. See, they don't know what they it is. I know you ain't gonna like that, but it's, it's different. different. It's not even, you know why they call it KFC? One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. All right, it's gonna be a television show, so I mean, or, so we can't get crazy. Right. So let's get back focused. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, what's next? Well, what's next for you, man? Well, I'm gonna do this shit again. Yeah. Let's do it. What's next for you, man? Um, for me, it's uh, Honor Up Part Two. Pay the full effect. And this movie, Dead Weight, is more books. Dusko goes to the center of the earth. More education. It's going to be, you know, Blue Rock, just music. You got records out on the Blue Rock. My man, bro. And uh, it's just different verticals. Right. You know? And, and and me being a creator, but also me trying to help and bring awareness to the things that need to be changed and also coming with a solution. Mm. You know, that's the most important things are solutions. Mm. And because we're used to complaining and talking about the problem, once you start chipping away at the problem, your PST, what is it, PST? PST. Yes. PTSD. PTSD. Post traumatic syndrome. I always forget the initial. 
it makes you still think that you're not doing anything. But I'm aware that I'm doing things. I'm going in these schools. You know, I'm part of, you know, the OSG and the commission. I'm putting in that work, you know? Yeah. So the solutions are happening. I have a plan and I'm enjoying it, you know, and also raising my children, being a dad, you know, being a husband. This shit is fucking fun. And then watching my friends evolve. So I don't have a ceiling, you know. I know that my Arena Football League is going to go. Mm. The AIFL, you know. I say it right? AI. AFL, right? What is it? AIFA. Yeah, AIFA. And, uh, you know, my children are now adults. And I've made brands. And I've, I, I, I have things for them to take to the next level. So it's really to see what my kids are going to do and for me to be able to watch. And, and that's what I've been hustling so hard, to just give them something to... Because to, you give them something. You give something to somebody that they don't fight for, they don't fight to keep it. Yeah. So that's I'd rather give part. them a brand that's not so profitable, but that's an A1 brand that has an opportunity to say, fight for this shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, I was talking to a, a fourth generation at the uh, one of the schools, and they were like, "This is a fact. First generation makes it, second generation maintains it, third generation fucks it up. It happens every time. Mm -hmm. Unless you're cognizant of that, you don't know how to stop that." So I'm asking him because he's a fourth generation cat. How the fuck did you stop that? And he told me he gave me the game, and that shit was important to me because I'm like, "Yo." I'm not going to accept anything but making enough that my grandkids' kids are billionaires. What was the game? It was about, he was saying that in the summers, you know, he had to do like maintenance and a lot of the stuff that I want to do, mm. you know, keeping around real people. Making a family, family name important again. Yeah, but making it bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I left you with hundred million, it's your job to make it a billion because you don't got to go through what I went through, but I'm going to make sure you know how to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? The <clears> biggest <throat> challenge has been raising my children. Yeah. You know, so the difference between going into an economically challenged school and a private school is one school is first generation kids. So I'm talking to the principal of the private school. He's like, yo, my issue is these are all third and fourth generation kids. They're entitled. Yeah. How do I get them to act like first generation kids? It's tough. They a bunch say, of um, spoiled fucks. Say tough times create tough people. Tough people create tough easy times. times. Easy times create Beast soft people. people and Beast soft people, people create, create tough, tough times. times. And the cycle continues. 100%. But being aware of you know, an algorithm and knowing what is going to traditionally happen, you can change it. Mm. So I'm trying to change cycles. That's why it was so important for me to have a wife and a kid that I grew up with because I didn't have that. And the other four or five of my kids didn't have that. So I didn't get to break that cycle. Right. I got to break a cycle. A pattern that happens over and over again is insanity, bro. If you know there's a problem, why do it the same way? You got to fix that shit. You know? So for me, everything that we've done has got us here. I got to do it different to get us somewhere else. Mm. And that's what I'm doing. So I don't expect people to understand it. No matter how I package it, what I know is that when I say things nicely, nobody hears me. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brother, I may you it. never bite your tongue. Ever. Facts. Appreciate that. No, you not. never oh. bite your tongue. <laughs> I'm, I'd be lying if I said... I didn't hear Dame Dash in the back, back of my mind when I was like cooking up certain plans, create this shit, and just just do something that nobody did, you know, like nobody in my position done. Like there's a certain strength about you that I feel like everyone needs to have deep down complete 
just 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 something, something in their hearts that they want to complete. Just something that's gonna tell them, shut the fuck up and get it done. And we thank you for your contribution, not only to hip hop, but to motivating younger brothers and sisters to get to higher levels. Appreciate that. This is hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve you heard.